Well, hello there, YouTube, and welcome to this free course all about UI and UX design inside of Figma. This course has been compiled from multiple live stream sessions that happen over the span of a few months where I created an Elden Ring companion app. I've taken out all the chaff, all the excess stuff that you don't need in those live streams and compiled them into this one streamlined course that you can watch from start to finish to get an idea and follow along with me for the entire design process. That means we're gonna start with the very basics, which is gathering assets and resources. We're gonna create our mood board. We're gonna talk color. We're gonna make design decisions and ideate. Then we're gonna move into low fidelity wireframes and into high fidelity designs. We're gonna prototype this thing, bring animations and everything to life. And you're gonna get an idea of the entire product design process from start to finish. And by the end of it, you will have a pretty cool uh, portfolio piece to add to Dribble, Behance, or your portfolio. So stay with me for the entirety of this course. I hope you enjoy it and I hope you get something awesome out of it. Stay tuned. And let's jump in and get some design work done, shall we? Uh, so I went ahead and just opened a new folder or new file, excuse me, in Figma. And uh, I went ahead and, and just like, I got a couple of assets like the logo and it's just some things to like work off of a couple of images. I don't really know. We're, we're probably going to be collecting a whole bunch more, but I also have a couple screenshots I took apparently of my own desktop. Let's get rid of that one. Wow. Um, okay. But also like some gameplay shots. Um, and, uh, and here's the cool thing. You don't have to, you don't have to love this game to follow along with these streams if you don't want to, because what we're really going to be doing is exploring some design basics, you know, typography, UI design, UX design, concepting ideas, basic patterns that work for UI design and mobile applications. If you just are getting started, or maybe you have been doing UI design for a while, this would be maybe fun stream to watch. Just put it on the background and my way of doing things might be different than your way of doing things. My way is not the way, uh, but it's always interesting to see other people's workflow and how they think about stuff and ask those questions in the chat. We will get to them in a little bit. I think the first thing to do is probably most likely to uh, hit F for frame and drop a, let's do a 13 Pro Max right in there and we'll just call this, <laughs> I have a, oh, sorry, I gotta get onto my screen. Um, I dropped that artboard in and I'm gonna L name this Elden Screen. No, I'm not, yeah, Elden Screen one. That's just too funny. That's a really bad dad joke. I'm gonna do it anyways. I'm gonna round the corners on my frame because that's how I like the design, making them look a little bit more like an app. Uh, so, all right, we got 16 pixels around a border radius there. Um, let's see, Chiz, Chima says, how are you enjoying the game? Loving the game. The game is so much fun. I can't stop playing the game. My wife and I are playing the game together, right? So she helps me navigate things and we have fun and it's a good old time. So, uh, I am definitely enjoying the game. So I'm definitely thinking we need like some sort of home screen. We could do a launch screen today. I don't know. I feel, almost feel like we should just do a little bit of a mood board, right? So I'm going to create another page up here, uh, and just call this. Uh, mood board like that. So let's just drag that up above. And I'm wondering like how in depth we should go in this streaming series. Like uh, Wolfram says, this, is this video sponsored by them? <laughs> no, it's not sponsored by, by Elden Ring. I wish that'd be awesome. It's just something I happen to like and enjoy. I'm currently playing. So it's like, what better thing to do than to mesh the thing that I'm currently in love with, with the other thing that I'm always in love with, which is UI design. Let's mesh those babies together and let's have some fun. So that's all, not sponsored at all. Just some fun content for you guys to enjoy and just uh, just hanging out. All right, so uh, should we do wireframes? I'm wondering, maybe, maybe. Let's do, let's, let's throw another page in there and call this wireframes, okay? And we'll play around a little bit, all right? So um, uh, side note, this might be uh, the best um, thumbnail I've ever made for, <laughs> for a design stream. I just had to throw that helmet on me. Okay. Uh, let's do a mood board. I'm just going to hit F for frame and drag out like a big board like this. And, uh, let's just grab a bunch of our assets. Cause that's always helpful. Just boom, boom, boom like that. Bring some of these assets onto the page. Um, I'm having this problem right now where like when I try to grab things offline, I just get everything in the WebP format, which just frustrates me. Google, I just want resources to throw into my mood boards, you know? Okay. I'm just going to bring all of these, pretty much all of these assets down, just size them down and whoop, bring them over. I'm going to make what's called a messy mood board. Um, 
and uh, you know, a messy mood board versus a strict mood board. The idea being like one of them is just like a bunch of things like camouflaged or, or camouflaged, collaged, collaged into place uh, to give you like a vibe. So that's that's all I'm doing. I'm just gonna vibe these photos out right there. Boom, boom, boom. Got some kind of like the app or the the game itself has like like some grim kind of tones like this. I love this color palette. Like it's these like kind of darker colors, um, greens, like, but the, the game itself is just uh, kind of a morose world anywhere you are. So I'm thinking like it probably should be like a dark application, just naturally speaking. Um, so I'm just gonna hit a rectangle. Actually, pff, never use rectangles when you can use frames. Frames are your friend, always use frames whenever you can. Let's say make this 90 by 90. I'm gonna hit I for my little, uh, ba -ba, I'm gonna give it a fill first. Now I can hit I for eyedropper. In Figma, you can't, you can't do the eyedropper until you've given it a little bit of a fill, which is, um, you know, that makes sense, all right? So I'm gonna grab these. Now, a lot of times people ask me like, okay, how do you make, how do you make like color palettes? What's the best way to make color palettes? Um, you know, do you use a tool? Sometimes I use a tool. Sometimes I just go for it, um, you know? So look, I'm just throwing together a little bit of like some color palette stuff right now. I'm gonna take that piece out. There is a lot of that gold color throughout. Gold in the game is like, uh, like a currency, like, uh, but it's not gold. They're called rune stones or something like that. Doesn't matter, but they have a goldish appeal to it. There's gold mist in the air when you're following certain things. So I like the idea of use, utilizing a little bit of this gold um, and making that kind of a highlight color. If we were thinking about like a 60, 30, 10, which is a video that I did recently where you use 60% of whatever your base color is. I could see that being like our dark color for our background. Then 30% of our, um, of our secondary color, which might be like this kind of dark green color, which I'm not sure if I love that dark green yet. And then the other 30% would be this. So here's a really easy way to do this. Um, I did it in the video, but I'll do it for you real fast is just let's make each of these uh, the width of 100 and, let, and we'll make them 50 high like this. Okay, cool. Now what we can do is space these out appropriately. Uh, we need this one to be 600, right? Because it's 60%. Okay, beautiful. Actually, you know what? We can go even smaller than this. Let's make each of these a width of 10. That's gonna be a lot easier. Now this one can be a literal 60. This one can be a literal 30, and this one is stuck with the 10, right? So look, we have 60, 30, 10. That could be our color palette, right? And as we grab it, we can extend it out no matter how wide. We're still getting that ratio of 60, 30, 10, right? So that might be a thing we do. Um, let's see, we might, we might, we might actually grab this whole background here and put a radial gradient on it. Uh, that radial gradient is gonna go from kind of like our green color on the inside and on the outside, it's gonna be 100%, uh, we'll do that dark color. Oh, we're getting kind of moody. We're getting kind of vibey here, aren't we? I like it. Um, yeah, okay, it's gonna be fun. Um, yeah, so like, let's drag this thing down. This is fun, like this. Um, yeah, what else, what, what else do we need to do here? Maybe let's experiment, so when I do uh, mood boards, um, I do, not only do I, I do something called mood board, a lot of times I'll do something that's called like a style tile. Um, and David Appleby says, are you gonna be using interactive components? Absolutely. Figma has interactive components for us. We gotta use them. Uh, it's a powerful feature in Figma. We're gonna be doing auto layout, interactive components, smart animate, all sorts of fun stuff. Um, we'll, and I'll show you along the way some of my favorite plugins and different things. So let's do this really quickly. I'm gonna add a stroke around the outside of each of these just so we can kind of see them. They're beautiful, okay. And that stroke is on the inside, which means we should be able to, yep, line them up so that we don't get any sort of weird double gap over them. That looks beautiful, I like that. Now we can see the color palette. Um, and okay, cool, yeah, kind of interesting. So okay, with our color palette now, we can group the whole thing together. We could size it back down and put it maybe over here, like underneath. We're just kind of creating a little bit of a layout thing here, right? Like what could this application look like? Maybe like this. Um, now what's interesting is like, 
you know, we can really quickly start setting some like some global variables inside of our Figma document. We're not done yet. We're not ready to do that. But when the time comes, I will be setting some some color variables. I'll be adding these to my document colors and typography and all that kind of stuff. Let's do a button really quickly, shall we? Uh, I'm going to take some text and uh, we don't want to do weird stylized text. We probably want to keep this pretty clean because you know, we want it to be really clear. It's a companion app. It doesn't have to be really stylistic. I know we're doing a lot of stylistic stuff, um, you know, so far, but let's keep the typography and everything pretty bare. Let's do something like Roboto or maybe uh, Montserrat. Mon let's do Montserrat and let's get out of light. We'll go to regular. I'll move my face out of the way here. And um, let's see, watch stream like that could be a call to action obviously on a button we could see that happening this is about 12 let's jump it up to like 16 and we'll go like semi bold and then i'm gonna hit we're gonna use uh um auto layout shift a to create an auto layout right auto layouts are frames frames are stylable so let's start styling uh our button using the auto layout so i'm gonna grab a little fill in there and what do we want the fill to be Ooh, let's say it's a, let's, let's just play with the call to action, right? And see what that could look like. So let's jump this up eight pixels of corner radius there to make a little button. And, uh, okay, let's come over here to our padding and move this in place so you can see what we're doing. Uh, auto layout gives us this little interface where we can say like, hey, stack things horizontally, vertically, yada, yada. Um, but then also we can mess with the space in between items. We don't really have it other items inside, but if I was to, for instance, open up an app like Nucleo, which is where I store like a lot of my icons and my icon sets, um, we could drag in some icons. It's going to take a second to load. So, why all right, I got Nucleo open, uh, and I don't know, let's throw like a, what do we have? Do we have like a video icon in here? Uh, or how about... How about live? Yeah, live. Ooh, there we go. There's a there's a live streaming icon right there. I like it. 48 pixels. Great. I'm going to drag that in. I'm going to drop it right there. Um, I'm going to size it down a little bit and I'm going to drag it into my auto layout. Now, let's zoom in so you can kind of see what's, what's cracking here. And I'm going to make it white so we can see it, right? As we drag things into an auto layout, you see that little... You can see the little uh, cursor pop up saying it's going to jump into the layout, right? So, okay, we'll put it right there. We'll see what happens. We'll size it down a little bit, okay? And we'll go back to our auto layout settings here, okay? So what we're saying with the auto layout settings is currently we want everything to be kind of uh, pinned or, or anchored to the top left or to the top or the bottom, right? So if we, and you'll really see this happen if we, kind of oversize this thing. Where is it sitting? Like all the text you can see in our button is kind of staying towards the top. Well, why is that? Because we have it set like that. Maybe we want it to be to the center, right? Or the left or the bottom. We control here, but we also now control spacing between our elements. Okay, so with that being done, let's size down the si that the size down, scale down the size of our, and maybe we'll use the actual scale tool with K so we don't mess with the size of that icon that looks pretty good to me let's come back in everything's centered we can change customize now the settings or the padding on the left and right hand edge of the button which is always a good idea to give it a little extra room right so we can do something like 30 there and 30 there okay i like that and now we have ourselves a nice button again this isn't the end all be all of button building but we're just creating a little bit of a we're creating a little bit of a system here, right? Like this is what we call a style tile. We're not building a real website or application. We are just building an idea of what the website or application could be. So let's, why don't we put a stroke on this thing and remove the outline there, or excuse me, the fill. We could do something like a secondary button. Um, okay, that could work. Oh, we're starting to think things through. I don't love the green that's being used in here. What I think I really want to do is go more from like pure black to whatever that deeper color is. That's much more moody. I like that. And if you, if it's too much for you, let's come back into our radial gradient and kind of expand a little bit the, the green that's inside of that radial gradient. I like that. Uh, that looks kind of cool to me. Okay, rad. Um, I'm thinking about texture too, because there's actually a lot of texture in the game. Um, how can we implement a little bit of texture into the game itself or into the application or the design itself. I'm not sure we might have to go out and find some textures. Okay. Um, I'm going to go to pop, 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 pop. 
let's look go out here and what kind of textures are in the game like brick textures grainy textures let's just type grainy texture here and see what we get in in the googs uh i'm gonna open up yeah kind of grainy let's just slap a little grainy texture on it and see what happens do we get a jpeg or we get one of those stinking webp format images that's fine we'll open it up not sponsored by any of these people or any of these places i'm going i'm just looking for grainy texture that's all just not grunge but just a little bit of grain kind of like some light concrete or something like this here's a this is metal texture Blah. if you're not into this portion of oh we know we just want the free download we you know you will attribute it who's this, this is by we're getting this at free pick there's your attribution okay good you got it um okay so where did that go to our downloads folder let's find it and bring it in Whew. that is a giant giant texture okay uh let's do this let's put it across the whole thing for now and let's just change the oh yeah yeah that made it very dark let's do something more like lighten or overlay there's a little okay so check it out this is kind of what i was going for in here just a little bit of that grittiness and graininess but i don't want it to be all the way um yeah, I don't want it to be all the way across the front, like a top the across the entire top. So I'm gonna grab it and just bring it to the back, right? So just get like a little bit of that graininess. That's kind of cool. All right, I mean we're kind of mood board and we're doing some things. I'm gonna grab these buttons and put them side by side underneath like the Elden Ring logo here. Let's just bring all this to the top. All right, um, I'm gonna line these things up. And if you were joining this stream just now and going like, oh, he must have some sort of like master plan about what he's doing, I don't. This is going to be a figure it out as we go, like brainstorm concept, let's work together kind of stream where we, <laughs> we figure some things out. Or I'm gonna put this thing there and I'm actually gonna go in and I need to lock the texture in the background. So I just went ahead and did that. So now I can grab elements like these and stretch them out a bit. Let's just pop things like that here. Okay. Um, you know, other things you can do inside of like a mood board is like, do you want to um, start dictating what type of, let's, let's, let's look for the crop here. Do you want to start dictating what type of icons you use? Do you want to start dictating? I don't know. What do you want to do? Um, I might actually bring this down and bring this across and actually bring it down to the bottom. And then we'll put these images on top. That's kind of a fun way to, to demonstrate, I think, a little bit. Well, I'm into that. Um, and then we can actually bring this back. Yikes. Let's go in really quickly and turn this back to fill. Um, yep, and now we can do that. We're gonna put that up there. I like that a little bit better. Um, what else do we need to do inside of this mood board? Buttons, navigation style, maybe, maybe a card style. Let's talk about, um, let's talk about, let's talk about putting another background on top of this. It's a solid that goes to black and I, it's just a little too green still for me. I, I want this to be really, I think a dark app and that green is just too much, right? Okay, so I think a little texture, a little bit of green, not too much green. We're gonna we're gonna go back and revise our color, or like definitely go back and revise our colors, right? And now, and also when I did this 60, 30, 10, it's just a guideline. They're like, there could and should be other colors probably in our color palette. Um, so let's go up to plugins and let's do something like actually, Actually, I'm going to go in and browse because there's a plugin that I really like in Adobe XD that I'm not sure if they have in. Do you have Dopely colors? Dope. Dopely? Plugins. Go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Dopely colors. I love this plugin. It's so good. Let's go back. Um, let's go to plugins really quick and find Dopely colors. Explore. It's going to bring up this really sick interface that allows us to find cool stuff inside of dopely colors all right so uh-huh color palettes uh well, there's other stuff you have to sign in color blind simulator color toner color harmony color converter we just need the color palettes for now um let's 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 look up dark themes okay well, what do we get for do oh, that's kind of interesting mm, we are shopping colors now here folks um oh i like the 
Yeah, that's kind of, we were kind of in here a little bit with these greens looking for an accent color. We're just playing around, y'all. Put this in the background, uh, lighten the grain a little bit. David Appleby says we might go back and do that 100%. Um, yeah, you guys might, again, you guys might be used to joining streams where the, the person already has a plan and there's some sort of pre-designed thing somewhere they're looking at. Not here. No, we're going to do this real time, dude. Uh, congratulations on your work. I'd like to ask what tips you would give to those who are starting in this area of UI and want to follow this part of UI slash game specifically. That's a great, that's a great question. I'm into that question. Um, yeah, if you want to pursue like UI design specifically in games, I don't know. I haven't really, I haven't really niched down in the game industry. Um, but if you wanted to, I think it's again, sorry to repeat it. I think it's about repetitions. I think it's about putting in the time. So, you know, what are you creating today? What are you making today that falls within that realm of interest, right? Um, so I think if you want to really focus on them, you're going to have to fill your portfolio with things that are like that. You're going to have to dedicate time to learning what's the industry standard for that specific industry or industries. Um, so it's just a lot of studying and observing and then practicing and getting in the reps. Um, that's my opinion. I don't like any of these color palettes. I'd like mine better. I feel like just it's, they're not, none of them are dark. Um, none of them are dark. That's bad. All right. So Dopely Colors, you let me down. You really let me down. That's okay. Um, all right. Let's stop there. Maybe we'll come back, you know? Let's start wireframing a little bit. I'm going to grab this Elden screen one and pop it into our wireframe. Um, let's talk about like a home screen. Uh, and we're going to take some notes probably over here. So I'm going to do actually T for text and drag out a text box. Um, and inside of that text box, we're going to bump up the text size whoa, to something like, I don't know, 40. It doesn't matter. It's just for note taking purposes and start typing inside. All right. So let's talk needs of the project here, folks. Um, in the chat, what do you think, uh, needs to go into this project? Cause we're concepting this thing together. It's not a solo endeavor. It's going to be a team effort, everybody. So let's figure out. Uh, you know, you know what, what we want to put inside of this thing. Um, I'm thinking definitely we want to have, uh, streams. Okay. So streams, uh, like live streams. What else? We want to have, um, a glossary. That would be cool. So people know I, I have this idea in my mind for, you know, uh, getting started maybe like an article or maybe there's a series of articles. Maybe it's more like, you know, uh, yeah, like articles or guides. We'll call them guides. Let's call them guides. And one of those would be like an example would be like getting started, right? Um, I don't know why I'm capitalizing things. This is just notes, right? Live streams, glossary, guides. Uh, I want an interactive map. That would be cool. Um, <laughs> uh, concept 2035 says, I don't even play Elder, Elder Ring. It's Elden. Sorry to correct you. I'm, I'm really in love with the game, but I, I know it has a big hype. It does have a big hype for sure. Um, and uh, character renditions like a viewer. Yeah, yeah, like character. You know, we could put that in guides, I think. Uh, characters, characters. Yeah, let's do characters. Uh, so you'd be able to see live streams, reference a glossary, see some guides, interactive map. Um <laughs> Concept says, my bad. It's all right. I wasn't trying to chastise you for calling my game Elder versus Elden. It's fine. Um, let's see. To-do list. My friends and I have had to keep a list going of things to return to. Oh, that's a great idea, Stephen Murray. Um, a a to-do list. A tra like notes, suggestions, and to-dos, right? Like, it would be cool. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah, it should have a section where you can invite friends into like a a shared space where you can share like personal tips and to do's like, hey, we're all going to go try to accomplish this thing. Open task. I like that. Um, let's go a friends uh, task list. Um, I like. Yeah, that's cool. That's a good idea. I like these. Let's start with these. Um, and as you guys chat more, it like calling it open tasks for things that are in progress. Um, open tasks. Okay. Sure. Let's call it open tasks. I'm down. You guys are building this with me. This is you. It's like a massage. You guide me. 
That was so awful and cheesy. Um, okay, we, you guys, I think this is a good a good way to start. Let's start with um, project needs. We have a live streaming section, glossary and guides, uh, interactive map and open task. I think that's enough. Like these are actually, if we if we think about it, these are the five main navigation items, aren't they? They're the five main navigation items for our application. So we can actually start right now and just slap in a main navigation uh, into our design. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hit F for frame because frames are your friend. Always use a frame versus using a rectangle or a shape because frames are way better. They're more scalable. They have, um, you know, more uh, uh, responsiveness and more uses than just a rectangle and grouping things together. So always do that. So, uh, okay, cool. Why don't we really quickly, not that I think that these are going to be, but why don't we create some some colors here? So I'm going to grab this really quickly, this color. And uh, you can see that I currently have like my brand colors that are popping in here. Do you, do you see this right here? Let me get me out of the way. See my show alter personal brand colors? Okay. Well, those are in there right now because if I turn on my team libraries, I have those in there. Let's get those out of there. We don't need those right now at all. We need Elden Ring stuff. So I'm going to come in here and now I have a clear space. I'm going to create this one and I'm going to call this our main color, right? And you can't see what I'm doing. I'm doing it here. Uh, let's call this main and then let's call this boom, like this and create a new one here. We'll call this secondary. That's horrible naming structure. They should be like primary, secondary. Um, but let's do one more anyways. I'm just naming these all sorts of wonky things. We can name this one uh, complementary. Um, you know, I, I, I honestly, when I do like UI and UX design work, I just call it like the CTA color. That's your call to action color, right? Now, when we click on nothing, we just click on the blank canvas. What do we get, right? We get our, like our color styles that are now baked into this thing. So let's call this one primary like this. And you know what you might want to do? is you might want to organize. I don't know if you're used to organizing things inside of Figma, but the slash is also your friend. It's the way that you do this. So we could call this brand slash primary, and now it drops it into a subfolder, right? We can call this one brand slash. I'm just going to copy that really quick and put that one in there. I'm going to do the same thing here. Brand slash. Look, boom, boom. Now they're all inside of brand, right? Now, in case later on, let's say we wanted like some sort of system color, like an error color like this, and we wanted some sort of system like success color, like, I don't know, it's like some sort of obvious green. These are going to be horrible, by the way. Don't, that's not the real colors, but we can now name this thing whoop, whoop, system slash error like this. And let's capitalize because I like capitals and we can do this one as look now they're in system error, right? Let's put another one right there really quickly. System slash Success. Don't worry, we'll change all of these before. But look, now we're building out a little system of colors here. This makes way more sense. And what I love about this is that later on, you know, later on when we when we change these colors, because we inevitably will, we're gonna call that our primary, our secondary, and our call to action. We'll do the same thing here, right? Like brand primary, brand secondary, brand call to action. Okay, great. When we do that, let's make sure that our button here is using our call to action color, right? If we go in and we now edit, look at this, our call to action color, which you can see here on our button and here in our color palette. If we edit this, let's just copy that guy right there. If we edit it and decide we want to do something more like purple, it changes everywhere because Figma is so smart. So we're going to come in here and paste that kind of cornflower yellow, whatever that is back in and we are cranking things out. All right, look, looking pretty good. I dig it. I'm into it. All right. So uh, somebody says, is this 60, 30, 10? Yeah, yeah. Well, that bottom thing is 60, 30, 10. Uh, I'm not saying that's the end all be all, but it's definitely a good place to start. Accent. Somebody said we should call it accent color. That's fine too. I'm going to call it CTA because I'm literally only going to use it for call to action, tappable, look at me, touch me, you know, click this kind of like action. So let's get into our wireframes. We are now completely devoid of any color. Um, and let's uh, let's actually create a couple of colors uh, for our wireframe, shall we? So uh, really wireframe should be a series of grays. Um, so I'm going to go like dark gray. Uh, here's like a lighter gray. And here is like an in-between, right? Okay, let's do something like this. Okay, so I'm going to name these as well because I want to just 
I don't have to be that. Do I have to be that crazy about it? I don't really, right? Okay, let's just make this dark because we know it's going to be a dark uh, navigation, right? And I'm not even going to like really worry too much right now even about like icons and stuff like that. That's design stuff. I don't want to get into high fidelity design. I just want to lay this sucker out. So I'm going to hit F for frame. I'm going to put that inside and I'm going to fill it with like this lighter color right here. And uh, I like starting, I like... I know that I'm most likely going to default to like a, an eight point like pixel grid. So I'm just going to start here and I'm going to put a little text down below, right? Uh, I think we're still on monster out. Let's just call this. What was the first, uh, the first thing we're going to do live streams. We'll just call it streams streams. Okay. Like this, I might as well just grab both of these really quickly. Shift a, put them into an auto layout. You know what I'm about to do. Um, and I'm, I'm about to just center everything like so. That works great. And we'll make sure this text is centered even. And look, now we have, whoop, we put that right there. That looks great. We can just duplicate this, can't we? Duplicate this over here and shift A, put those into an auto layout. And now when I copy and paste, boom, look at that. They're gonna, <laughs> they are going to stay like balanced perfectly 16 is a bit big let's jump down to 14 let's jump down to 14 and go from semi-bold to regular i feel like that that feels good now here's what's crazy right like we actually we built this auto layout and we put it inside of a frame but auto layouts are frames why don't we just style it that's what we should be doing is filling it with that same color gray beautiful look let's get rid of this now and bring this up. Now all we have to do is change the padding. Let's add some padding to this inside of the auto layout, shall we? I like it. Okay, we're going. Let's put it to the edge there. And pop, 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 pop. Look at that. We filled it up there beautifully. Now we have a bottom anchored navigation. Now you might have to play with this a little bit because as we start to expand and stretch this out, maybe we need that to be you know, a little bit like these these items to be stretched out or spaced out from each other in between. That's fine, but I think this is a good place to start. So let's let's see what happens with this. I'm gonna bring my my list down. I'm gonna auto height that and bring it down so we can play and pop these in. Right, this one should be. Uh, let's call this one guides. That's more interesting. Let's call this one uh, glossary. Let's call this one uh, maps map. Let's just go map, and this one can be. Uh, I'm just going to call it tasks, right? We know it's called open tasks. We understand, right? Okay. So when I stretch, when I stretch, uh, like my thing out, ev like my nav bar out, all the elements kind of stay squished over there and the, we don't want that. And the reason it's doing that, right, is we need to keep everything centered and we don't want to choose packed. We want space between, right? What does space between do? It's going to actually space out everything. It kind of mimics CSS flex box and it spaces things out and says, Hey, just make sure the space between is equal. And then, it, you know, we'll dictate everything else. That's fine. But see the difference between check it out space between and packed. It's going to try to pack everything in. Now nah, we don't want that space between now. What's cool is this thing will respond, right? As we stretch this out and it becomes like an iPad app. Uh, now it's all very, very seamless, okay? Love it. It's looking good. I'm into it so far. I'm just because, I, I don't know why. I just want these to look more like circles so we know that they're gonna be icons. And we need to grab each one of these and we need to add eight pixels of spacing in between them. And now what's the overall spacing? 24. So check this out. Now when I space, 16 pixels it's not spacing left and right right before it was kind of kicking out left and right now it's just doing top and bottom boom we've created a nice responsive navigation down here using our things right so where do people go Ooh, here's the hard part that we have because one of the things we need is probably i always like to have a dashboard like an aggregation of everything so i think we need to condense um glossary and guides i think we need this one to be like home um and then or you know what yeah home and i think the home should switch over here to the left i have i have it inside of an auto layout so i can just drag them around and it keeps the spacing real nice for me which is so great so home streams guides map and tasks Epic. Okay. Now here's what's not in our application. You always need inside of an application. Somebody says the buttons feel off center, but they're not. I promise you they're not because auto layout is doing the work for us. Um, so 
Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, you all, you're always going to need like um, some place to access your account, and we don't have that right now. So we are going to have to draw a frame up here that will end up becoming an avatar, um, I think, right? So let's just round this. That's an avatar. Okay. Now here might be the time, maybe, 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 to implement a loose grid, right? Not a... I'm not gonna do my eight point pixel grid quite yet, but I am gonna turn on my layout grid up here in Figment. And all I did was press plus on that to add a layout grid. So we could come in here and say, let's add my eight point pixel grid, but we could also come in here and say, hey, show me a column. Um, and I want to center this and let's stretch the width out. So I get a little bit of spacing from the left and right hand edge, perfectly like that. And I'll probably just loosely go off of that spacing look at that i didn't even mean to do that look how perfectly it's lining up almost absolutely perfect right ah it feels so good when things like that happen okay so our avatar is in there we're doing columns and if you ask yourself this question like oh i don't know what to use i mean there's like the grid columns rows there's responsive grids that stretch there's centered grids what's a gutter what's a ugh, i don't know i did an entire video of it you can find it on my channel where we talk about the basics of grids in interface design you should watch that um but i you know really at the end of the day there's going to be some uh some industry standards for the way that you use grids and columns and rows but then a lot of it is really dependent on you and what makes sense to you i think people overcomplicate the usage of grids i i think a little bit so i don't think you need to do that um i think we're just fine hey side note if you haven't already like subscribe hit the bell notification for this stream you might want to do that because i do streams like this quite often and we're going to be continuing this series okay so uh we kind of condensed glossary and guides so why don't we actually just so we keep some structure here yeah guides and glossary i like that okay so that's all working out all right and our our avatar is going to go in there and all right i guess we are working out this is obviously i think this is the home screen right um so we're going to call this Elden screen dash home. This is our aggregated screen. Now, um, let's talk about some of the easier. I, I, a lot of times people like to, like if they're designing a website, they like to design the home page first. I don't like actually designing the home page first um, because for me, the home page is a lot of customization. Um, like you, it's room for customized play, right? Similarly, on the home screen or the dashboard of your application. A lot of times that's a place for like aggregation or unique, you know, edge cases. Whereas if I go to like a streams page, we're going to start building out really solid interface components first, right? It's going to be very structured and formatted on list pages. We might call those things, right? List pages. Um, you know, so I might build the live stream page first and then come back and see how that any elements and components I've designed now play into the home page or the the aggregated screen right so okay um, with that being said i'm going to duplicate this over here because we should have some similarities but i won't have the avatar up there i don't think or maybe i will let's leave it and we will call this one uh streams okay and i have a option l on my keyboard setup i think everybody should in figma to just can collapse all of my artboards and you can also hit option Oh, or is it control G, excuse me, control G to on and off your grids and your guides, your layout grids and guides. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, auto layout is the way to go, Summer is saying. So when we're talking about streams, let's see, let's see, let's see. I'm just going to rough this out really quickly. I'm going to hit F for frame. I'm going to drag out like it's most likely a card, right, that has like the stream inside of it. That's the easiest way to imagine this. Um, why don't we fill this with gray of some kind? I don't really care. Uh, why don't we round these corners? We'll stop at about eight pixels rounded. And then we have a choice, right? We can do like, you know, the card with all the details on top of it, or we can do the card that has like an actual card underneath. And here's, if you're like, what the heck did you just say? I mean, something like it's hard to see it now, but let me fill it with like a very light gray. 
and then take my grids and guides off. So it's the difference between having a card that has the image of the stream inside of it and then dropping the information on top of the image uh, or actually having a spot reserved to put like text or something inside, right? So that's that's definitely, yeah. Um, <laughs> Summer says auto layout plus variants equal Iron Man plus Captain America. Yeah, very, very powerful for sure. Um, make them... Oh, what did somebody... David Appleby, you said, make them Elden Ring symbols. What? Make what Elden Ring symbols? That's a great idea. Um, I just don't know. I just don't know what you mean. So let's play with one like this and let's see, right? Let's see what, let's see what happens with it. Um, I have been playing. If you, Tommy, Tommy's joining us. If you're just joining, uh, we're doing an Elden Ring companion app concept because I'm addicted to Elden Ring. I've been playing Elden. I done, I done been playing that game, homie. I'm super on it. I'm in love with it. It's so much fun. It's honestly the hardest game I've ever played in my life, but I'm having a lot of fun. I'm going to shift a and turn this into an auto layout. Um, the problem with auto layout, and I don't like this is that you can't go negative. I'm pretty sure. Can you go negative? I don't think you can. Um, so here's like butted right up against, I'm going like 10 pixels back, right? Butt up against 10 pixels back. So we can kind of stack these. Like maybe this is like a, somebody who's watching currently, how many people are watching? Uh, that's a common thing. Or we could just do, you know, the person's information and we'll have some sort of gradient. Right, so let's do another fill on top of it uh, to even show the gradient. So let's go linear gradient, bop, 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 something like that. Uh, why is it so light? I don't know, oh, 20%, that's why. We'll do something like that, okay? It's a little intense, let's bring it down a little bit. Okay, cool. And then this is really dark inside for our wireframe. We won't be able to see that it's gonna be an avatar. And you know, usually when you're doing stuff like this, when you're wireframing, you know, <laughs> It's people like want to see, oh, there's going to be an image of some kind in here. So let's put the crisscross to show that there's imagery. Ah, I'm going to skip that for now just because I know that you guys know. Yeah, everybody out there, you know. All right, we're going to put images in here. Um, and I'm just, I don't want to do that right now. It's a lot of time, extra work. Um, oh, somebody said put put uh, Elden Ring symbols in there as as my bottom navigation. Yeah, that'd be that'd be cool. Um, I think our home could be that, couldn't it? Yeah, like our home could be the Elden Ring symbol, um, but the rest of them will have actual iconography to represent, okay? Um, I'm going to, what were we using here? We we're using Montserrat Regular 14. So I'm gonna grab that text. I'm gonna come up here and boom, I'm gonna paste it in and make sure, ooh, where'd you go, friend? Boom, pop there, okay. So the name of a streamer, um, name of streamer, Boom, let's make sure we're left hand aligning this. And uh, yeah, something like that. And then we'll do like a little uh, live chip. We call these chips in UI design. We're gonna put that over there. And I don't think this thing is inside of our frame. So let's drag that inside. We have like a, oh, this is gonna be our avatar frame. All uh, right, now we have the, everything should be one, almost there. Let's drag this guy in there as well. Boom, it's all inside the frame. We can move it around as one. Okay, name of streamer, uh, the fact that they're live, maybe this needs to be down here and the live chip needs to be up there possibly. But we also usually have some stats, like so maybe we move this, let's explore, right? Uh, this over there and then this could be like 1.9K watching. Um, and I don't know, does that go up there? Does it go over here? I think it could probably go over there. This probably, yeah, this makes sense. Um, just the distribution of information is important here. Uh, we're about 10 pixels from every edge here. This is a really big avatar to have in there. I'm gonna shrink it down a little bit. Uh, we're 10 pixels away. Centering using our alignment tools, this works. And okay, that's pretty good. And I could auto lay out the, the heck out of that, but I'm not going to. So, okay, so we have like a streaming card. It's a little small. Maybe, do we wanna, how many people are currently, so this is a UX question you might have to ask, right? How many people are currently streaming Elden Ring? It's probably the most popular game right now being streamed on like Twitch and YouTube. I mean, there's still a lot of people playing like Call of Duty and other games and Fortnite, whatever. But when something's hot, a lot of people jump on it, right? So there's gonna be an increased amount for a while. So as I think about like, okay, there's an increased amount right now, but is it as many streams as, if I was to build a general streaming platform and 
uh, there was like Rocket League being played and like hundreds of games, I want you to be able to see as many games as possible, right? I want these things to be really small. Here's what I'm gonna do really quickly. I'm gonna group it together. I'm just gonna make sure it's fixed to the bottom left, top right. We're using responsive restraints here. So now I can, I can manipulate my card, right? If this is a generic streaming app and it's hundreds of games being streamed, I want you to be able to see like as many as you possibly can at one time, right? So, um, you know, I'm like, just shows the, as the smallest possible amount. Maybe, maybe even like, maybe these are bigger, right? But maybe like, I'm going to do like a two up kind of thing. So you can see as many games as possible. But if this, if this is specifically like Elden Ring streams, I might want you to see like more and I might want you to not focus so much because it's not about what game is being played. It's about who's streaming. So I might want to give you a little bit more information about the streamer, right? Okay. So maybe let's, let's, let's go big for now. Not quite that big, but maybe like 208. We're at 395 by 208. Okay. I'm going to grab these shift a, put them inside of an auto layout. And my spacing is going to be 16 pixels because I'm probably going to be Google a pixel grid. Copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. We have a bunch of them here, right? Command left bracket, move this to the back there, and uh, ba 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 da, da. And we take our frame, and we need to move it up so that uh, on when we prototype, we can actually scroll this thing. Let's prototype it really quickly. And if you're like prototype, this thing's a wireframe. You should be. Oh, I gotta make sure that I turn on prototype. No scrolling, vertical scrolling. There it is. Now we can, ho oh, ho, almost there. Except that our navigation needs to stay fixed. Where do we fix position? Right there on scrolling. That's what we want. So now when we press play, boom, we have our, our application. And honestly, this is what you would want to test. This is what you would want to prototype and have people try to accomplish a certain thing. So we're starting to build out a flow, right? Our user enters the application. That user really wants to watch streams. <laughs> Did I just beat my chest as I was talking and I went like that. So they, they want to watch a stream. That's their thing. That's they're the type of user that wants to watch streams. They click on the stream bottom tab bar navigation here, right? And they are presented into like the streaming list page and they scroll, they pick one. We got to go to the next flow where it shows them the stream. So we're building out flows or work streams, so to speak, inside of our UI design, okay? Uh, we just did a really quick wireframe and minimal prototyping here for our streaming page, uh, which is good. I, you know, I like, we're going to call this our stream uh, list. And then um, we could immediately design the stream page, um, like the individual stream page, stream product page, you might call it. Um, yeah, that could be a thing. Uh, I like this idea of the test. Let's just one more, just, just do one more really quickly and we'll do the stream page because we're already in this work stream right now. Uh, and uh, I love everyone's comments about the game itself. It's so great. So let's do this really quickly uh, since we are in uh, the streams tab, let's just highlight that somehow, you know, and we'll make it, I don't know, black or pure white like that. That, that Let's do that. Um, and we'll just bump this up to like bold so you can see that's, you're active there, okay? Now, when you get to a stream page, like a like a, the product page, so to speak, um, we want people to be a little bit more immersed. So this is, you know, basic like UX design. We don't wanna keep a bottom navigation there, right? We want them to have to back out to go to that main lobby. And I, I wanna throw something out there at you really quickly. Um, when you're thinking about designing products in the digital realm, you should always be thinking how this would apply to the real world, okay? Um, digital products mimic real world products. Digital shops mimic real world shops, okay? So when you walk into a store, for instance, um, you don't walk directly into one specific section, like the women's clothing section. You usually walk into a lobby where you can kind of generally uh, assess what's around you. A lot of times in malls, there's a map to tell you. So you walk generally into an area that welcomes you. That's the best way to do it, right? Um, and, and so I can see that the men's department's there, the women's department's there, perfume is there. Like, there, where do I want to go? This is our aggregation page, right? Where we kind of shop at a glance and window shop at everything, 
right? Once I like a specific shop or think about it like walking down the street window shopping. Oh, that shops for that, that shops for that. And it's all on one street. The street is our application, okay? The street is our application and each of our tabs here represent one of our storefronts. They click on a storefront and they go into a store. They click inside of it on a product in that store and they will now be zoomed in right to that individual product, right? So I'm walking down the street and there's a bunch of technology stores. I go into the Apple store and I see an iPhone. I pick up the iPhone. I'm no longer aware of the Apple store or the stores outside. I'm focused here. I'm immersed on the product. That's what we're doing here. We're building that immersion. So once they get into the product, we don't want to show them the main navigation anymore. We don't want to show them extraneous elements that are not pertinent to them right this moment. The thing that's pertinent to them right this moment is most likely just this single product and everything that it entails, right? So now all of a sudden, what we really care about is what? We care about the stream. That's it. <laughs> Our user has said, show me the stream. And to show them anything else, I mean, eventually you can show them some other things, some, some some suggested things perhaps, but to show them other things right away, that's a bad user experience. We wanted to say, hey, here is now the stream that you clicked on, it's right here, right? Isn't that a better way to think about things? So always try to think about things in a real world scenario and go, yeah, that wouldn't, that wouldn't make sense. What would make sense if I was in a real world scenario? This makes a lot more sense, right? So, okay, and now, and there might even be some changes, right? Like maybe we don't need uh, the, the stats up here. What's pertinent now to the video that's playing are most likely controls for that video. Does that make sense? So let's bring Nucleo back out and give me a, I don't know, give me a play button of some sort. Let's jump up to like 24 pixels and, and you could find like a specific style that you wanna operate in here. So, okay, yeah, like just bring this play button in here, you know, and, and um, we'll pop that right there and we will hit K for scale and bring that in. And it's probably going to be auto playing right when you come in. But now like the most important thing for the video is the video itself and being able to control the video. That's become me as a user. My primary function and or desire is to play this video. I already told you I want to play this video. You know how I clicked on it over here on the left hand side. It should just play, right? We've even we've even fast tracked this idea, right? In TikTok, when you open up the application, it doesn't even ask you if you want to play. It doesn't even onboard you. It just starts showing you content, right? That's why TikTok blew up so quickly was because it did away with that old stupid onboarding process of thank you for downloading the application. Here's five swipeable screens that explain to you the application. Do you want to sign up for the application? And I I've spent all this time not getting the thing that I downloaded the application to do, which is view content. In TikTok, you download the app, open it up, and it just starts playing. This is why Netflix and other streaming services, they have mastered the autoplay feature, right? Or roll over the preview, just start playing the preview, right? It like the difference, here's a great example. Here's a, a use case scenario. In Netflix, if I'm scrolling down or any of the other massive streaming services, and I hover over a video, it starts autoplaying. In the Microsoft gaming store, right, you get sent to a gaming page or a movie page, it does not start autoplaying. One of those is a good is a good experience. Like most likely, if I'm stopping for at least two or three seconds on a video, I want more information about it. So on hover or on hold or pause over something, just give me what I most likely want, which is a preview, some more information, the ability to add it to a list or play it right now done. See how easy that interaction is versus, oh, I've hovered over it. I've stopped. I'll click on it. Oh, it sent me to a product page. Okay. I got to scroll down three times and press play to watch a preview. Okay. I got to back out of that preview. Okay. Now I'm going to add it to my list. Do you see how many steps is saved by the idea, the solution of autoplay? This is what digital product designers do. Sorry. That was like a massive rant. I'm just really passionate about like thinking about things the right way. Okay. This by the way is atrocious. It's horrible. I don't like it, but let's bring the information of our streamer down. We don't need it to be any longer on the video. Let's bring this up and we're just going to start auto playing this most likely. So this is, this play button is irrelevant. Um, again, our stat, let's bring that down. Like let's make that doesn't have to be up there anymore. This can be over here. Let's line these things up because the video is the primary thing that we want, right? 
Um, that's what we really, really want. So we could do that. And then give me, give me an arrow, right? Give me an arrow here. Okay, I'm gonna take this arrow. Whoop, I'm gonna pop it right there. And I'm gonna bring it into place and I'm gonna make it white. And we know that our user now knows that they've been given the exact thing that they were hoping to find, obviously. But now they, if the next thing that they wanna find is how do I get the heck out of this video? It's very, very obvious top left, but we don't put it at the bottom because that's a primary action, right? Uh, so we don't need to give them a primary action. It's more of a secondary action. It's tucked away in the right spot. Okay, cool. Uh, you know, I'm pressing control G to turn my grids on and off. Look, I have lined these up inappropriately. Okay, we need to make sure we're kind of staying on our grid. All right, and all that's looking good. Okay, great. Um, this thing is Jai massive. We don't need it to be like that. Let's uh, scale it down like so fine. Okay, and there's probably some other controls. We could talk about that We are just wireframing right now. What goes on underneath it? I don't know maybe um, a description or some stats or there's got to be some other call to action that we can think of right that needs to happen down here uh, But for now, let's stop there. Let's stop the pop up. Let's do one more thing Let's add a let's add a call to action actually this go text here and we'll we'll put a button um, um, and what what should be what should be our call to action? What could people do inside of, I mean, obviously we want them to chat. There should be some sort of live chat feature um, inside of the live streams, but we also want them maybe like tip the creator, um, subscribe to this channel. These are all good like call to actions, like a primary. Enjoy this stream and then boop, add a little something. Um, start a stream of your own. There's lots of ideas. Um, Logan's all says, what's the name of the icons app that you use? I use an app called Nucleo. Um, but I've in the past I've used another one called Icon Jar. Um, I think they're both free to download. I'm pretty sure. Um, so definitely. Okay, yeah, that's great. So uh, I don't know. I don't know what the call to action is gonna be. So let's just put one down here. Like uh, tip this streamer. This is most likely gonna change. I hate this. Um, but why don't we actually go to our mood board? That was my giant face in there. And come back and we will boop like this. Let's bring our ooh. Never ever put color inside of your wireframes unless you immediately want your clients or stakeholders to go, but it's yellow. I don't like yellow. Well, we're not talking about the yellow right now. We're talking about we're talking about the structure and layout and content. Don't talk to me about yellow right now. Okay. So tip uh this streamer. Okay. And let's get rid of that. Let's make it just a black button. We'll make it stand out. Let's bring Nucleo back up. And uh, give me a money icon of some sort. Oh, this is a jovial little money icon. Or we got this little hand right there. That's a sweet little one. Okay, let's grab that. I love this feature in Figma, by the way, called selection colors, where like when you have, watch if we have a second one and we change it to red and now I'm selecting like multiple items, it'll tell me the colors of everything selected. So if I'm like, oh yeah, make the red one, you know, purple and make the black one white. Like it's just such a smart stinking feature. Good job, Figma. You know me, you know what I need. All right, so look, we pop that into the auto layout. Uh, it's kind of chunky. I'm not loving how chunky that, that thing is, but that's okay. Uh, let's just grab this and whoop, we'll stretch it out, give it some space and then bam. Just like that. We've made a call to action. That call to action is really, really thin. Uh, I don't, you know, it's top and bottom. It needs a little bit more like 16 top, 16 bottom. And let's do really quick. We'll do math right inside this little box. I want the left and the right spacing to be more like eight times four, 32. That's better. Let's go eight times four. That's 32. Okay, so we've dictated the spacing. Yeah, that button looks a lot more tappable. It looks a lot better, I think. And then, you know what I'm going to do? Just just because I feel like we're coming close to the end of our stream for the day. We've been on for a little bit. I'm literally just going to throw the word chat in here because that's a, that's a lot to design, right? Uh, community chat or stream uh, chat. So a lot of, I will do this sometimes. I'll like, I'll throw like a box together and just be like, all right, that, that'll get designed later. Um, so for instance, like, boom, I would make like stream chat there. And then this one would be like, uh, bah, 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 bah. this one would be like stream, 
uh, uh, information like that. Stream chat can go underneath it. We can stretch this thing out like that. Bink, like that. All right, cool. So we have a little bit of the start of our application. Let's grab all of these and just tidy them up, get some equal spacing so it doesn't look so gross. And we'll space that out there. Looking good. Let's just run a little bit of a prototype there. Um, and let's ban the person in the chat with the gross name. Uh, boom. You are blocked <laughs> for your grossness. Thanks for sharing. Um, yep, I will block you if you're gross on my streams. <clears throat> so, don't appreciate it. Okay, let's run a little prototype here. This would be fun. Um, I like it. Let's go to our prototype persona over here in side of Figma and let's grab our streams node and I'm going to drag it over and say on click I want you to navigate to uh, the screen list let's rename this one really quickly screen uh, stream uh, product okay or we call it like detail probably that's better I like that better okay so we have one prototype that's going, and what is it doing? I don't want it to go instantly. Let's just push, right? Let's do a simple uh, push. It'll push to the left. We get that little preview right there, like that, okay? And then, yeah, might as well smart animate any matching layers, like that a lot, okay? And then we'll do this one, um, and when you click on, actually, let's make it the second one just for fun. Uh, drag that over, and we can push over that way as well. Um, and then when we go this way, we go back, we want to push the other way. And when we click home here, you guessed it, we'll push the other way, okay? Now we can send this off. Let's call this uh, streaming. That's, we'll name the, the that flow the streaming flow. We're here on our desktop or on our, our desktop, on our, our home screen. Look at how amazing this home screen is. It's so good. But we can click on streams and it slides the content over. Uh, we can scroll because we have that vertical scroll on and we can see, oh, this is the one to click on or I could go back to home. And look, I even like that it's, it is kind of like actively uh, um, smart animating the elements. So let's just go back really quickly so we can, and, and highlight the other one. What do we do? We made this like from regular to semi-bold and we turned this to be white. So it's just, it's just auto animating those elements now. Look at that back and forth. Just simple, 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 simple. I don't love the treatment that I did here. It's it's making it go from like, it's changing the weight of the text. And so you're gonna see a little bit of movement in the navigation. I don't love that, but whatever. So, okay, cool. We can click back and forth between the two. We can click on a stream, it pushes over. Beautiful, okay, rad. Go back. And we have a little bit of a prototype that's already being built. Look at that. Let's skip this for now because uh, we need to go back and rewire frame, I think, a little bit of this, um, of this like actual stream page because I'm not, I don't love where we left off here. I mean, I definitely think this is probably looking all right. Um, there's probably nothing really wrong here. I don't, we probably don't need this. It's probably just going to auto play and there'll be some controls on it and we can keep live up here if we want to. Um, but it might be nice to get a little bit more information. Also, I don't agree with this main call to action. Um, being tipped the streamer that could be like a cool sub thing, but I don't I don't think it needs to be like the main thing, right? I actually think once you jump into a stream, I don't know about you, but when I watch streams on chat or streams on Twitch, I just want to start chatting, you know, like engaging uh, with my streamer of choice. So that's probably what we want to do a little bit. Um, so, oh yeah, okay, so Cody says my, I don't even know my own Twitch handle. My Twitch handle, or my handle on Twitch is I am Jesse Show, just like it is on Instagram. That's right, thank you for reminding me of my own information that I don't know. So, we're gonna zoom out here just a little bit, and let's, uh, let's bring this information down, because I don't think, I think we could do a little bit more with this section right here. Um, and we might actually, ooh, yeah, I was gonna say maybe we'll start doing some visual design stuff, but let's keep it with the wireframing thing for now let's make a chip out of this um, if you don't know what chip is a chip is a basic term in ui world for some sort of little tag type interface element we call them chips um, you can call it a tag call whatever you want it's fine by me i don't really care but we're going to create a chip when and the easiest way to do that honestly is just to hit shift a and do auto layout inside of figma because figma is amazing like that so um with that done why don't we add a fill so we can kind of see it we'll just do a little black chip like this and we're getting some basic padding 
on our chip, right? So hold on, where, where, where's our, where's, where's our chip? Sweet mama, we zoomed all sorts of weird wonky ways. Let's go back and get into our chip here. And now let's zoom in so you can actually see what I'm doing. Okay, so um, I'm zoomed way, way far in. And really what I'm doing is I'm messing with the auto layout, which we don't need to, but really the padding. I can do all around padding, which let's start with eight top and bottom. And then we'll come in here and just make sure that our text always stays centered. And we will do eight. I don't know, I'm gonna go eight times four, do the math right there. Boom, that's a little bit big. So let's go eight times three, 24. I could have done that math in my head, but I just wanted to show you that you could do math inside of Figma right there in the property panels. Um, so let's zoom out a little bit so we can kind of see and get a little context. We probably, well, let's round the corners. Notice I'm keeping everything divisible by eight. That's just, if I, it, it, I might depart from the eight pixel grid system. I might, right? But when I'm starting a project, I'm always just going to, like go right to it as my like my go-to because I know for a fact that it makes a ton of sense um, and it's going to be very helpful in the future. This is really, really massive. So I'm going to hit K. Ooh, not K actually. Let's go back and we're going to rework the padding. I'll go four there and let's drop the top padding or the side padding down to like 16. Yeah, 16 to four I think is better, right? If you're expecting to join the stream and it's like a really nice like fast stream no we're figuring things out as we go i think for me um i like streams where i watch people think in real time so i don't want you to see some sort of polished fake version i want you to i want you to see the real deal this is this is the real deal me figuring things out i'm gonna look up a little elden ring image i'm gonna break my own rule um of of you know like wireframing always with just like boxes and and never ever with uh like imagery but i just like it's such a pretty game i want to look at it is the thing so i'm just gonna take a quick snapshot i've been a lot more lately i don't know if it's because i'm using this new brave browser but i'm getting a lot more uh like uh, web mp or whatever format that is that really frustrates me it's not a jpeg so i really hate that so i'm gonna drag this in and boom, pop it right there let's turn our uh Let's turn, yeah, let's turn that gradient off at the top. I don't think we need that right now. Um, yeah, bup, 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 bup. somebody said, Cody said, keeping spacing divisible by a single number helps with developing the app too. It absolutely does. Uh, that's creating, you know, a, a system. Before you've even really created a system, you're thinking in a system. And later on, when you start defining an actual system, there's some foundational elements, right? There's some, <laughs> there's some rhyme or reason to it before you ever really get into making those hardcore decisions. WebP is really common now because it's much better for page load speed. I know it's better for page load speed, but it frustrates me because I just want to pull an image out and have it as a JPEG. So now I have to take stupid screenshots, snapshot images. That's fine. I'm just complaining. I'm complaining about something that doesn't matter so let's drop down to, drop that corner radius down to four I think that looks a little bit better also I like eight because uh, you know it's just very divisible by lots of things so let's take this live chip down to two this looks really good to me it's two I mean 12 sorry yikes I can't talk today I did a live stream this morning already on Instagram I did an Instagram live uh, with the founder of spline which is a 3d tool that was super fun Alejandro great guy um, and uh, we talked about like the future of 3D and all that kind of stuff. So um, I don't stream all, I don't do IG lives as much as I'd like to, but well, I think I might start doing some more because it's pretty fun. Okay, let's do something here. Like uh, we'll do the word like trending uh, number uh, 10 or something like that. Okay, that's not how you spell the word trending. Well, I really do wish that auto like spell, spell check would be automatically integrated into Figma like it is in XD. Um, cause I'm horrible at spelling and grammar. I wish it would just fix it for me. So let's do some text options here. Um, we'll zoom in so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, let's do alignment left, obvi, got to do that. Let's do capitalizing that thing. And then we'll hide this and we'll do some simple character spacing just to make it pop a little bit. I'm going to do it to like 6%. Um, and then let's bring this, this is not as important. So let's bring it way down, like trending 10 or 10 pixels there. And I'm even going to bring a little bit of the opacity down. So, you know, it's just, it's a fun little thing that shows that we're trending and, um, but I don't want it to be like the highlight. What I actually want to be the highlight is probably 
how many people are watching. We got this thing. We should have a title because a lot of times streamers, uh, they name the name of their stream, obviously. Like, what's this one called? Like, I'm watching a lot of uh, Dr. Disrespect as he streams Elden Ring and he does super... Um, like a cynical like <laughs> uh, like titles for his streams like super easy uh and of course they all like do it uppercase don't they they always do it in uppercase but we won't do that because it looks awful let's do it super easy dungeons in elden ring uh and we'll do like that like uh watch me uh, decimate bosses or something like that all right they always got something crazy like that let's do uh, auto height text. So we'll pop this back in like this. We're using monster app and this is not the final, obviously like text, uh, like style that we're going to use, but let's just, uh, we'll add a little bit of weight to show, you know, that maybe it's like a little bit, a little bit more emphasis here on the title of this thing. And I think we still need more information. So let's make some space here. We got time. We got space. We can play, right? Um, so, yeah. Uh, somebody said they've been loving the Brave browser. I like it too. I like it. It feels just like Google Chrome, except I know that nobody's tracking me. So that's nice. Um, I like to not be sold a bunch of stuff and block a bunch of ad trackers. So that's why I use Brave browser. Not sponsored. Just like it. Pretty cool. Um, okay, let's do... Uh, you know what? Maybe I don't like the watching thing up here. Maybe let's let's ditch that for a second. Let's pull it off our artboard or off our frame really quickly. What if I did it down here? Hmm, what if I did a similar thing over here? What are we talking about here? We're 17 pixels from the left. That's really weird. Let's go 16. Thank you. And 16 from the right. We're right anchor that text. Maybe this does need to be like 1.9K. Watching that could be, yeah, yeah bah, 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 bah. that could be interesting. I don't think we need any other details here. Um, I think this works. I, you know, we're talking about content here. This is not a stream about content, this is a stream about design. So, what are we thinking? Um, here's the thing I, I, I think I want to do something kind of interesting. I don't want to just like throw the name of the streamer up there. And also, when we think about like call to actions, right? We have to think about like, I think I want people to immediately engage in the chat. I'm making the decision as the stakeholder, AKA the designer here on this concept. But I also, I want people to have secondary and tertiary actions. This is how we, we have to think, right? When we're designing, like what is the primary? Watch the stream, engage in the chat. That's the primary. Okay, so then what is secondary? Secondary might be subscribing to the, the streamer's channel, um, tipping the streamer, you know, favoriting some, I don't know, some, something like that. And then the tertiary possibilities like might be um, going to their account, um, you know, finding other streams by that streamer. So we have to think in clear primary, secondary, tertiary kind of actions for the user. So that's what I'm trying to do right now. I'm thinking, let's card this, shall we? Um, uh, yeah, 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 let's do... You know what? Let's move this up and out of the way really quick. Let's let's do this. Let's go streamer information. And we'll get rid of this because we're about to bring these things down. Boom, right here and paste. And also, can I just say something? This is a really weird little side uh, like <laughs> issue that I have. But in Figma, the paste options just make a lot of sense, right? Like, okay, for instance, I X this out. I click on an area and I paste, it pastes it near the area I'm clicking. In Adobe XD and some other ones, uh, other design programs like Sketch, you, you just paste it, it's gonna put it wherever the heck it wants and that frustrates me, right? Like just put it where I told you to put it. That's all I'm saying. Okay, so I'm gonna make a gray box here. This is gonna be a spot where we put our streamer's information, obviously. Let's bump up, is this in a, is this in a, it should be. Shift A, auto layout that, boom, get rid of the group. Who needs a group when you have auto layout? Boom, make that much bigger. Uh, grab the actual auto layout uh, like frame there because frames are auto layout or auto layouts are frames, excuse me. And then we'll just center it. Um, name of the streamer goes there. Let's just put one that we know like Dr. Dis Re spect okay like we'll put him there uh we'll find a ridiculous picture of him or something and then we probably there's certain stats you probably need like there's going to be a lot of people gaming i'm just like moving this down to be like 36 by 36 because that's a nice easy number to work with um you know there should be some sort of stat down here and then there should be here we have a little uh, spot for like 
call to actions over here. So let's do another ellipse. Let's do it like this, okay? We're, I don't know if this is final, but we're gonna see. Uh, bop, 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 bop. Put those 16 pixels away from each other. Let's put like two options here, okay? And then, I don't know, we'll grab this capitalized text again, like down below. Let's put something like, oh, bop, bop, paste it right there. Ooh, that's pasting it inside of the auto layout. I didn't want that, I wanted it here put it and you know where it actually should go this is gonna be really weird but it should go inside of this thing so that it's centered so let's put this here I'll grab these two air elements shift a auto layout make it go vertical okay so now we have auto layouts inside of auto layouts that's okay right because we're organizing these auto layouts I want this to be but up against each other now here's this is a really interesting like point of conversation okay um i am butting up the bounding boxes i don't know if you can see the bounding boxes of these two pieces of text um the text itself is not actually butted up next to each other it's the bounding boxes in the design tool this is something actually called the soft grid versus the hard grid um the soft grid being the bounding boxes of whatever design tool okay the hard grid is going to be Okay, like, oh, I need this text to be eight pixels, 16 pixels away from the baseline of the previous piece of text, right? So if we were, let's just do a piece of text here to demonstrate, okay? Let's, let's talk hard grid versus soft grid, right? This is the soft grid because they're just kind of the bounding boxes are butting up next to each other. This would actually be the hard grid, right? And we would say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's the hard grid. See how it's different than the soft grid? And the reason I'm bringing this up is because it's kind of team or development uh, um, choice, right? Which one are they more comfortable with? I've worked with large and small organizations and companies, and some of them just prefer you to use the design tool. We'll make it work. We'll figure it out. And some go are saying like, hey, we would like a firm baseline grid, and we'd like to work off of a very, very hard grid. So everything, you, you know, doesn't matter what your bounding boxes and your design tool are. What matters is the actual hard grid of the baseline. So just a fun little interesting thing. Okay, uh, let's uh, uh, let's bring this down to, let's keep it at 14, but jump it up to semi-bold so we get a little bit of contrast there between those two things. These things are massive. Let's take away the stroke off of these. And just for, you know, I don't know, for wireframing purposes, We'll bring those down and just make them white, okay? Now I'm gonna take these items and we should actually shift A, put it in an auto layout, you guessed it. We're gonna balance this. And then look at this, watch this. These things are in their own, like kind of, I don't know, what do you say? It's in its own, like their own like groups or own auto layouts. Let's put them in an auto layout, center it, right? We should get, okay, yep, 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 yep. What we need to do is come in here to this one and say not hug contents, but fill container. And now we should keep everything pushed over to the right. Okay, now let's watch this. Let's get rid of the background there because we don't need it. And let's just, it's all inside of one auto layout. Let's fill that auto layout and just style it. And then we'll add padding. See why auto layouts are the best thing in the world. Um, okay, cool. That worked great. Oh, it's grouped for some reason. We don't want that. Bink. Get it out of the group. Now we can actually edit the auto layout, right? And it's responsive by its very nature, which is radical. Okay, and we can round the corners. One, two, three, four. Oh my gosh, this is looking great and I love it. Okay, um, stream information. Do we need stream information then at that point or should we just go all chat? Stream information, all chat. I don't know, we'll see. Uh, this looks pretty cool. I like this actually. Um, we need some icons inside of these things. So I'm just gonna open up Nucleo, which is where I'm kind of, I don't know, I'm. I'm holding all of my uh, icons right now, storing all of them. I used to use Icon Jar. Uh, that one was okay. I don't know why. I don't know. I just switched. I don't even have a reason why I switched. I just switched um, to Nucleo. It's not like, I don't think it's any better. I, I think I just found some cool packs that I liked and they worked better in here. So uh, let's do, I don't know, find me a heart, a basic heart. Cool. Yeah, basic. Bring that in. Um, we're shopping in all the only 24 pixels and we're doing... You can either do filled or outline. Let's just do all outlines and really simplify it. And then we'll do another one. Let's do uh, 
Oh, let's do user. And it would be nice if I could get an icon that has a plus already attached to it. Oh, look, 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 look. We might find it here. Yes, beautiful. Okay, let's grab this. This will be like our subscribe icon, right? Okay, so I'm going to X that out. I'm going to come in here and it's pregnant. Oh, it worked. It worked. It worked. It worked. Okay, cool. No, that worked perfectly. Let's try that again. X the other one out. Click on there. Pop it right in. Oh my gosh. Look at that. I just flop it around. I'm selecting the element and then command bracket. We could switch the positioning of them. Hello. That works great. Um, let's do we have a plug in uh, UI faces. Let's see. UI faces has not worked for me recently, but let's just grab select any shape. Uh, no, that shape right there. That's the one we want. It can't fill. Can it not fill a um, a frame? Um, interesting. It needs a shape. Ah, that is crazy, man. Okay, let's find an image of Doctor Disrespect. Just because disrespect. If you're like, who is Doctor Disrespect? He's a ridiculous character. That's that's Doctor Disrespect. He's crazy. Um, yep, that's the guy. Uh, let's let's take this image and we'll just get a perfect. Whoop, uh, avatar of him. Love it. We're done. We got what we need. Uh, can we fill it with an image? Yes, we can. Image and make it this one. Make it so. Number two. Okay. We've done it. We've done the thing. So, all right. So, we got some information in there. One thing I think also needs to probably be in here is some sort of... Um, no, I was going to say prestige, like ranking, like, um, yeah, like, a, like a check mark, like a Twitter check mark, right? Okay. So let's, let's do a Twitter check mark in here of some kind. Uh, I'm going to go up to shapes and give me a polygon. Let's try polygon. Whoa. Oh, we popped it in here. That's fine. Um, how many sides to our polygon? Ba -ba -ba -ba. Let's fill it with a darker color really quickly. Okay. And we're going to want to, oh yeah, change the amount of sides on our polygon can we can we make this like more convex we can we should be able to grab these edges no 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 what figma what are you doing to me no 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 that's not what i want uh we want not a polygon we want a star that's i think that's what we want a star with multiple sides so let's get in here hit our star Whew, gotta remember these things. Okay, let's do a star with lots of sides like this. Ah, there's our controls. That's what I was looking for to make a little badgy badge. Let's round. Can we make them a little cuter? Can we round the corners? Yeah, we make them a little cuter. I love playing with like the custom shapes inside of. Oh gosh, maybe I don't want it cuter. Keep it spiky, maybe, and just like there we go. Let's do something like that. That works. Bring the side, the whole thing down here. Grab these two together. Shift A. Put it in a horizontal layout. Hello. So many auto layouts inside of auto layouts. It's making your head spin. Okay. Um, I like that. Okay. Um, let's turn. Let's grab that and just make it black with the rest of the things we have there. We need a check mark. Open up Nucleo. And we could make our own in like two seconds, but we're stubborn. So we're going to do, yeah, let's do a check mark, like Twitter check mark style. Uh, X that out, pop right in there, and oh, we got to scale because if we don't, it has a border and it's going to try to respect that border size. So let's make our selection white. Oh my gosh, yep, we'll put it right in the center there. X it out. Are we inside of the frame? Take those two, group it together. And now we shouldn't have to worry so much. There we go. So now it's one group. It's one grouped element inside of the um, auto layout. So it'll all stay together now, right? Oh my gosh, it's so good. What's really cool about this is now this is, it should be a pretty responsive like element, right? Um, we can stretch this out to an iPad, out to desktop if we wanted to do something like that. These are really massive. So I'm gonna bring these down just a little bit. Yeah. That's a little bit better. I like it a little bit better. Let's go 16 pixel spacing away from each other so they have like really good tappable points. Otherwise, 
we start getting what's called like a fat thumbs issue, right? When element tappable elements are too close together, I try to tap one, oops, I tap the other, that's a bad user experience. So we wanna make sure that things are tappable and nice. And if I tap over here on Dr. Disrespect, I go to his profile. If I tap here, I follow him. If I tap here, I like him or something. I don't know, different action, we'll figure those out. You know, this is not the only way we could have done this. We could have done it a much more minimal way, but I don't know, I kind of liked the way that we did do it. Um, let's do this. We need a way to, nah, let's get, let's get, that stream information is all this stuff up here, isn't it? Let's space this out a little bit. I like that a little bit more. Let's take these two elements, shift A, put them together. Um, we are going to not do packed, but space apart. That's the thing that keeps them spaced the way that we like them. And we'll take the whole thing, go 16 pixels from the top. We're working off the soft grid today. Uh, let's do 16 there and boom, one, two, three, four, we're 16 there. See, everything's nice and tidy, spaced, lovely. Uh, I think this text needs to be a little bit bigger, uh, but if you want to, we could be real spicy and grab all three of these things, shift A, put them inside of a uh, auto layout and boom. Now, when I increase the size of this text from 16 to, I don't know, something that makes more sense, maybe like 20 um, and space this out like so, boom. There's the title, there's the top of our streaming application. Um, okay, uh, let's move into chat now. Um, that's in you know, it's interesting to think about chat, like what's the right way to like transition into chat? I tell you what we're gonna have to do regardless is we're gonna have to create some sort of like chat avatar type deal. So let's get rid of this placeholder for our chat and let's dive in and create. It's gonna be kind of similar to this. So we might be able to borrow our streamer kind of set up here. And I'm gonna press Command V. Ooh, we don't need it inside, we need it here because this is where our chat is gonna start taking place. Okay, um, let's. it's not gonna be Dr. Disrespect chatting in his own thing. So let's go back and to a solid, uh, let's fill it with a something like this, all right? And I don't think we should have any sort of tag on this, so let's get rid of that. Um, and we, I think we should just do this is going to be kind of interesting, actually, um, because you should have like your avatar. I think the avatar should be a little bit smaller, though, don't you? Um, let's grab the internal elements of this and almost kind of like disassemble everything. Boom, we'll pull it out. Uh, trending, we don't need that. Let's start. Let's start over a little bit, shall we? OK, cool. Um, I'm going to take this and it's not it shouldn't be as big as the streamer's name. It just should not. So let's take that out of the frame as well. Let's start from scratch. Um, I might be making life harder for myself, but the avatar doesn't need to be as big either. And we pop those over the left. And this could be like, I don't know who's in the chat right now. Um, Adam Moulton is Adam underscore Moulton. Okay, you're going to be chatting and enjoying uh, the stream from doc Dr. Disrespect. Now, what we need to do is it's this is going to be kind of hard to maintain. I, I'm starting to like maybe think, but uh, we need to create a little bit of a pattern here. Um, and we could maybe use like semicolon or yeah, like colon, excuse me, after it. And then these do not need to be semi bold, they could be regular. Man, yeah, regular. And what are these, 12? 12 is good, still legible, but there's gonna be a lot of chat, so we wanna keep it pretty small. And then what we could do is, we can kind of fake the funk here a little bit. Um, I'm gonna do auto height or auto width text and do something like small, right? Like, uh, like um, this is so fun while they're watching. Okay, um, so we could color this, which I think we might do, because the colors might represent different things for our stream, right? color this like that um, ba, 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 ba. I think one thing we need to do is probably go all lowercase and let's tighten up what's the character spacing on this can we just tighten this up a little bit it seems to be really really wide especially for chat um, negative one pixel would be a little bit better and there you go you have the start to like uh, like a single line of chat let's do another line of chat here that's pretty close so let's go eight pixels away um these can kind of stretch out just a little bit more oh yeah like that okay that works good but what do we do if it's a double line okay so like amazing uh i have been playing this game for okay and then you have to have your next line which so let's move the next line down take it back 
boom, like this. We're kind of like, we're kind of manually creating because um, it's hard to space these down unless we do like, here's the text or the name, and then we can just do like auto height text. That's, this is a, maybe this is a more extendable ex like way to do this. So we'll just try this version as well. I'm sampling different styles, right? Uh, let's grab this, try it out, boom. I've been playing this game. Amazing, I've been playing this game for so long and have not been able to beat this boss. How did you get that shield? I don't know, it seems like something you would say inside of a stream, right? <laughs> um, so line height is a little tight on this, so let's fix that just a little bit. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. We're gonna move it up to about 20. Um, okay, that looks pretty good. And you know, there would probably be lots of emojis uh, amazing. Can we put emojis in? I'm going to open up a little plugin that I have installed on my computer called Rocket. Boom. And Rocket allows you to um, type in a colon and then start typing and it'll give you uh, like emojis that you can enter in like that. Boom. Okay. Amazing. But looks like it's not working inside of Figma. Doesn't work inside of Figma. What? Madi Miad just joined. Is this mobile app design? Yes, it is. It's mobile app design. Um, so uh, welcome to the parte. We are just designing a fake streaming platform uh, or a, a fake companion app for the game Elden Ring because I love that game. So um, let's see. And you know what? Let's make our life really, really easy here before we go too far. I'm going to hit uh, E for, oh, excuse me, O for oval. I thought it was E for or, uh, E for ellipse, but that might be a different program there. Let me open up UI faces again and see if we can get a face inside of there. Can we? Will it? APL, API fail to provide avatars. Try modifying the filters. What are you doing to me? Give me that. Happiness. Sure. Apply. Oh, okay. We just had to have somebody. <laughs> had to have a few things selected. Okay. So I guess here's like the question. Let's grab these two things together. Shift A. Put them in an auto layout. Center some things. And then, uh, I don't know. Maybe we just group these things together or something, right? Um or maybe drag this thing all the way across like that. And then can we put this in an auto layout? Boom, no, because it's gonna try to shove it. Ooh, how do we solve this while keeping the auto layout spiciness? Um, I think I know how. I'm gonna add an invisible rectangle that goes out to the spacing where I want it to be spaced. Okay, and I'm gonna grab the both these, shift A, put it in horizontal like this. Uh, make this thing invisible by bringing the transparency down. Oh, I just cheated and I feel okay about it. Uh, oh, but can I get a, back a hold of it? Yes, I can. Boom, like this. So we're going to space it out. And now, uh, maybe I, maybe I just like, okay, let's just do this one because it's a little bit easier to extend. Um, yeah, let's do this one, okay? And every time we do this, we have to kind of recalculate our little spacing element here. So let's just kick it back in like so. Okay, that works good. So look, cause now we can create like the longest chat ever and it all extends and we don't have to worry about it. Could be a single line, cause could be a double line. That all works great. And I don't think I need this anymore. And we might be able to go from regular to semi bold. Yeah, 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 that looks way better. Let's get rid of these. I don't like those. I like these, okay? I don't know what this is. A leftover auto layout that was just chilling. Okay, um, and what's really cool is, right, uh, let's do them eight away from each other. They could be one-liners, like, uh, bah, bah, bah. I have been playing, I have been loving this game, right? This could be a new user. Who else is in our chat right now? Let's do uh, Madi Miad, okay? Uh, Madi Miad, you are also chatting uh, or playing in, in our little concept app today. Uh, cool. Okay, fun. Um, we can grab all of these things. Shift A, put them in an auto layout. Now they're evenly spaced eight pixels away from each other using auto layout. And what's great is when I grab these, Command C, Command V, I can just paste multiple versions of these in here together. Boom, like that. Um, and then I wonder, do we have, uh, do we have a content like Lorem Ipsum plugin in here? If so, can I grab all of these? Not that, just the names. Let's go plugin shopping really quickly. Do we, I think we have content reel. So how many plugins I have? This is crazy. Content reel, don't do me wrong. Open up. 
Oh my gosh, it won't open. Content reel. Hello. Why are you messing with me? Uh, open. Man, when a plugin doesn't open, that just breaks my heart. Okay, there it is. Okay. Uh, full name first, last. Do we have a, a screen name for... Whatever, that's fine. We'll just do full names. I'm going to grab all these. Bink, 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 and bink. And I'm going to... Boom, change all the names. Ah, that's super nice. Let's grab all these and do some lorem ipsum. And it should all, if we've done our job right, it should all auto uh, expand, right? Lorem ipsum short. Oh, everything auto expanded. <laughs> that felt so good. Okay, let's grab all of these avatars here and we will use UI faces uno mas. One more time. Uh, UI faces, give me some of this and this. And I don't care you know give me some diversity a little bit that'd be great okay yeah that works fine okay we'll bring this whole thing back in it's all in a frame it's an auto layout frame pop it over there on the left hand side lining it up why don't we grab uh boy we need to switch some colors here so we're just kind of alternating colors because you see that a lot in stream i actually don't know what that means in the streaming platforms why different names are different colors it might be like membership tier or level or something like that uh, let's do a blue one there and heck, let's do another orange one down here. That's fine. Uh, the spacing is really like intense. So we need to space it out a little bit more. Why is it not? Oh, weird. Oh, weird. Okay. Boom. Boom. X those out. Aha. Think for some reason it got, uh, it's, it's going into the internal auto layout. So let's command L, uh, can we paste them? inside boom okay that's i was getting us some weird behavior of things going inside of auto layouts here and taking up too much space so we just need to pop them out in the layers panel and then they're spaced perfectly okay that i think that looks pretty good we might be able to re-mess with the spacing uh yes let's go with that i'm gonna break my rule and just go to 10 because i think that just needs a little bit more space out is pretty much the bomb.com so you should be doing everything in auto layout okay um i like this i think like we didn't need this thing anymore this is pretty pretty chill pretty good um and uh what you know what we do need though uh maybe like a like what if somebody types a description for their for their stream um I think that that should probably, let's have a section in here, shall we? Okay, well, we're gonna do one more thing. Boom, boom, uh, let's go like this. Is that in there? Is that space correctly? No, let's put it back inside this auto layout. Beautiful, okay. Let's do this, it's called chat. Uh, we'll bring the size of this down. We're gonna create like a table row cell, kind of like an element here that um that is going to take up like a row people can open and close like the description that'll have like links and all sorts of stuff inside of it and then maybe actually instead of doing it inside the auto layout oh yikes uh <laughs> maybe we'll pop it in right here and pop it down okay so maybe we'll create a style actually of like collapsible accordions um and maybe the chat is one of them maybe you could hide the chat away maybe it's too busy for you and you just want to watch the stream and not see the chat maybe so let's do um uh description description i can't spell okay um and i'm gonna do shift a right to create the uh the thing there and this is kind of a unique situation right i've created the auto layout but it's immediately padding everything equally around the side i don't want that so i'm gonna center everything and i'm gonna customize the spacing here um so that it butts all the way up against the left hand edge. I'm going to take this down to zero. Okay. And this is the start to creating our table row cell, right? So description, boom. Um, and I probably need to have, give me, give me an arrow. Give me a Chevron or something. Chevron, standard Chevron down. I'm singing little songs about Chevrons. I've lost my mind. Okay. Pop this here like so good um and let's you know we could auto lay out the heck out of this thing but let's just keep it for now like this and boom we'll tilt that up and we'll group it together right 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 right, right. and maybe we will drag this whole group and we will put it in the uh, oh come on baby um x you out of there pop you in there command c and command v paste another one in there which will represent 
our chit chat, okay? So this one will be chat like this. And the only difference is this one will be down showing that we currently have it open. And this is a little confusing, like the up down thing. So let's just go, though we can't do that, right? Because Chevron arrows usually lead, they push to a new screen. So let's keep it up. We're doing kind of like an accordion thing here. And then the chat is tied here. This is a proximity issue, right? Basic UI design 101, okay? Like uh, proximity is important. How close things are to one another dictate relationship, right? So if this chat is all the way down here, does it actually relate to this, this chat inside there? Not really, right? But if it's kind of further up, it all of a sudden there's relationship that we're defining. If it's too close, it just looks like it's, oh, it's like crowding the space, right? Uh, but I'm using the soft grid there and just bringing it up, popping it into place. And we have, um, we have that going. Good, we want everything just to line up perfectly. This is great. Um, and here's one thing we do want also is I'm gonna grab all of these uh, inside of my um, inside of my auto layouts and I don't want them to be fixed width. I want them to actually extend. So we wanna say, ooh, not fixed width. Why is that not working? This is gonna be an auto layout issue. Okay, let's see, let's see. Hug contents, no, fill container, right? Okay, that fills container. Not fixed with group here. What are we doing? Why is it in a group? It shouldn't be in a group. Pull it up out of the group. That's better. Not fixed with, but fill container. And come on, baby. What are you doing? What are you doing to me? This thing, not hug contents, but fill container. So everything should be filling container. And I don't know why it is not. Okay, this can be fixed with, that's fine. Boom, 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 boom. Ah, we'll come back, we'll figure it out, that's fine. Okay, for now, this is a much better streaming thing here. Um, if you want to chat though, that's a problem because we haven't put any sort of chat box in here, have we? So uh, that's gonna require a solution. So let's, tr let's try to fix that right now. I think probably one of the easiest things to do is take a rectangle. And I, I know I said never draw rectangles unless it truly is nothing more than a shape like what I'm about to do. So I'm gonna do a linear gradient going from white to white, and one side is 100% and the other is, um, the other side is 0%, but I have those mixed. So let's just rearrange this gradient so that that's on the bottom, that's on the top, and you can't really see what I'm doing, so let me zoom in a little bit. We've created a gradient at the bottom. Let's just drag it up. It's not doing quite what we need it to do, so let's drag this up just a little bit and drag this up as well. So now we're getting kind of like a nice fade uh, from the bottom up, and that's where we're gonna put our chat box right in there, right? Um, let's do a, uh, a frame. Oh, actually, let's do some text here. Um, we'll just put... Uh, the word message, uh, dot, 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 let's do that. And um, let's do like a chat button. Let's make a chat button, shall we? Okay, I'm gonna do that. So actually, I, I really like this style. Let's just reuse this style. And rule of thumb, you start reusing styles like quite a bit. That means ooh, a component is in the near future for this bad boy. So we're gonna center align these things. Um, and let's swap this. Let's go to Nucleo again, and let's look for a message uh, button. Uh, let's use the little paper airplane. That that works fine. Um, I'm gonna grab this frame. Oh my gosh, let's zoom in so I can see what I'm doing here. And I'm gonna exit out from there, pop it into there. Try to pop it one level too deep into the actual other icon frame. Um, I'm gonna hit K for scale. I'm gonna scale this thing down. Where right? It this is this is very bad spacing for a button, right? Like we we need some clarity and and a little bit of breathing room around anything. So okay, so we have a little message thing right there. Let's grab both of these things. Shift A, right? Center them like so, and then say not packed, but space between. This allows me to stretch out. Uh, this element and then we're gonna need to fill it and style it really quickly. So let's fill it I don't know. Let's fill it with like a darker color just so we can see it and let's add a little bit of Padding because padding is important Let's do eight pixels of padding and we'll do eight pixels of rounding But we were doing four for pretty much everything else. So there we go. We have a little bit of a chat box All we have to do is try to woof woof. It is trying to like enter it into 
our auto layout everywhere that we put any and everywhere that we put it it's trying to pop it into place so let's get it lined up where we need it to be bink like this and then let's see if we can bring it down without getting it too involved with the auto layout no we don't want that okay good beautiful center align it bring our gradient up a little bit more and we have a little bit of a chat platform this is a little tight to the left and right hand edge so let's double it uh, to be 16 on the left and right hand edge. I think that works really, really well. Um, and we have a pretty consistent UI that we're building so far, right? Um, we're not using a lot of uh, like, we're not doing rounded like pill styles. We're not doing harsh, crisp corners. We've created kind of a four pixel rounded style. We've created a style for buttons actually already. Um, they are kind of like rounded tappable points like this. So those are pretty big, same thing. Um, these are really representing the icons there, so that's fine. But now if we press play, we can kind of travel back and forth between our prototype um, and we can see the different elements. We'd be able to tap down the description um, and close our chat if we want to. I think with a, um, with a streaming app, you're probably gonna be concerned about uh, the portrait view as well, right? Okay, so let's let's try this real quick. Let's do another copy of this same thing. So we'll have all the same elements, but we're just gonna hit this fun, fancy little button up here that goes change from portrait to landscape. Let's see what happens when we do it. Okay, 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 okay. Let's move all of this stuff before we do that we know there's going to be some work to do, right? So let's move all this stuff off real quick. Bink and change that. Okay. Now the thing about a streaming like app is uh, all this other stuff starts to really take like a backseat, doesn't it? Um, oh man, let's do this one more time. We need, some, we need some space here. Let's move this out of the way. Let's landscape that one more time. Um, it really becomes, if I'm turning my my device landscape, it means I'm really hyper-focused on watching right now. Um, and so all of the other call to actions now become incredibly minimal. It's actually back to that conversation we were having about primary, secondary, tertiary. Here's an interesting thought, right? Like an interesting principle is the user without tapping something, but simply by making a decision and turning their device sideways, has made a choice. They've made an active choice to say what has now become primary to them. And so in our designs, we not only need to think about what's currently on the screen and how to organize that information, but how does a user react? How does a user interact with the device that our design is built to interact with, right? So as a user is, right, turning their device, they mean something else by it, right? We could learn more about this through user testing and user studies. But generally speaking, that's what tends to happen, okay? So they've turned the device and we need to figure out how to solve for that, that action that they have committed. So I, I'm going to go out on a limb and say they probably want to watch really badly, right? Um, whoa, let's move our live thing all the way over here. And then I actually don't, I'm not really aware of how um, like streaming stuff looks, um, you know, like when it's in landscape mode, maybe I need to do open up Twitch right now and just see, or maybe we just try some stuff. Let's try some stuff. Let's try some stuff and do it wrong. And then, <laughs> and then we'll do some research. Let's make some horrible off the cusp assumptions and then we'll come back and we'll figure it out from there. Okay. Uh, okay. What do we have here? We have all of that streaming information, right? Um, I don't need at this point, the title, I think that becomes hyper secondary. Um, I don't need, uh, maybe I need this information. Let's, let's copy this and paste it inside. Okay. Maybe I need this information. I don't know. What does this look like? Do we keep it all the way like anchored across the bottom? That's very intrusive though. Maybe we do all of that, but we hide the background. Oh getting somewhere we're doing a thing i think we're doing a thing okay um and you know what maybe we went real immersive so maybe we don't actually need the back button because you don't get that unless you're in portrait mode we're making a little ed a little executive decision here let's change the color to this text so that we can see it real clearly okay I kind of inverted it um we don't need any of this other stuff let's get rid of that look at how look at how good we're doing right now okay um 
Do you still need the ability to chat? Yes, probably. You need to see it at least, right? Um, let's move the message box in all of its glory out of the way. We'll have to figure out how to integrate that through some sort of interactive experience. I mean, most likely also like we have this streamer's information up here, but most of the time when people are streaming, they have these complex like overlays that are, you know, like it's for them in their game, right? So they're like anchored like this somehow in the bottom right hand corner and they're streaming away and they have other overlays like up here, like on the chat. So we might just want to, let's reuse this gradient really quickly. And instead of black, let's make both sides white. What do we do? Okay. What do we do to get the chat in there? We're going to figure it out right now, friends. We're going to do this together. If you have thoughts, throw them in our chat here of this live stream. Push that behind there. Really minimize that. And up in goes my, well, before we go too far, uh, let's take all this text and invert it to go white. Oh, gosh, how nice was that? Um, and all of these, I think, oh, no. Okay, hold on one second. I'm selecting the wrong thing. Let's bring our entire chat interface back out here again. Let's undo everything we did. Hold on, hold on. I have a, I have a plan. I have a plan, I promise. There is a plan. Before we get too far, let's grab everything. Do you ever, Have you ever used this? This is actually pretty important inside of Figma. When you select and a group of elements, it's gonna give you the selection colors, like everything that's selected inside of there. And you can just change, you can grab what you're currently working with, like white, that's these white boxes, right? If we wanted to turn them red all of a sudden, we can. How time-saving is that? Holy cow, that's amazing, right? Okay, so let's just grab this and pop it down to zero. We don't need to see them. And then we can grab anything that's black and now make the text white. Oh my gosh, thank you, Figma. Let's do this, okay? Um, well, we, we want to keep it pretty minimal, like out of the way, right? Out of like out of the way of gameplay. So maybe this is what we do. Hmm. Hmm. Center it. Center it. Is this ugly? Is this horrible? You tell me. Um, those are like maybe like on this platform, you're specifically streaming to this platform. And we tone down. Yeah, 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 maybe something like that. I'm not opposed to this. I don't love this, but I'm, I'm not saying it's the worst thing that's ever happened. Um, maybe we have to shrink all of our text down. This is why I could get, I wish I could get these, uh, fill the container. I wish I could get this auto layout, like parent-child deal to work. Ugh, I want you to shrink when I shrink. That's what I want, fill container. Then you have to go into each individual one, bink, bink, the names and the text, names and the text. And I want all those to not fixed with, no. Stop telling me that. Uh, fixed with, no, fill container, fill container. I think maybe it was these titles, the names that were like stopping me in my auto layout from uh, Getting, oh, getting the shrinking nature oh, this is what I'm really trying to do. Uh, ba, ba, ba. Let's get all these out, pop them back in. Shift A, they're in a new deal here. Hug the contents. Each of our individuals are not fixed with. They are, I know I'm gonna mess with this for a little bit longer and then I'm straight giving up because I'm tired of messing with it. Okay. No, stretch out, you weirdo. Uh, okay, I give up, that's fine. Um, we're, we're, we, we've given up. So let us just tuck this back in and see if this is, is this, is this work? I don't know. Let's take this really small chat and put it up at the top because that, I feel like that Maddie's chat is right there. Um, cause we, we do still need a spot for a chat box, right? So maybe we're going to like, Ooh, let's get rid of this for now. Let's make some really bad assumptions and and force something in here, okay? Um, chat box is bottom right. I'm not liking this, you guys. I'm not loving this at all. Um, I'm really actually hating it quite a bit. So that's a problem. So this is a, I've, yeah, just let it, let it be known. If you've never designed something, it's gonna come with challenges because you're not used to what makes most sense, right? I have to do a little bit of research and figure this out, folks. So don't feel bad. Don't, don't, 
don't get down on yourself. If you don't quite understand how something is supposed to work, you probably need to not do it live on the stream for the very first time ever. That's probably what you need to do. Um, okay, um, let's move this messaging box over to the left-hand side and move the chat. Oh, you stinker. Okay, you listen to me. You do what I tell you to do. <laughs> Stupid <laughs> chat box. All right. Um, maybe we, yeah, 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 maybe we do something like this. Okay. Um, maybe we do something like that. And then this is where like, I wish I could get these things to extend perfectly. Cause if this could extend, boy, now we have something. Now we have something, right? We can reposition the size of the chat box. And I tell ya, this is where that other chat style would really like be nice. Uh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Everyone's going to laugh at me out there on the stream. I'm going to rework the chat boxes real quick because I think now I have a reason like possibly to like rethink how the chat boxes were structured, right? Because they're not, they're not flowing well. Are you, are you tracking with me? Oh, yeah, you'll see in a second. Let's get rid of the spacing thing that we had. Now it seems like what would be right. No, don't you do that. Don't you do that to me. Uh, where am I? Where do I still have auto layout stuff? Get out auto layout. I did away with you. This is where now it makes sense to have text on the same line, right? Okay. And then you could like this, we'd have to fake it because we can't create these like, like staggered kind of text boxes without doing something like that. So this, this, there's now some little bit of like this makes a little bit more sense. I'm I'm like panicking because it's not really Woo, okay. Something like that. Boom. So you just you see what I'm saying though, right? Like this now makes a little bit more sense to refigure these things out. Let me just pop pop this right here and we'll elongate this. Okay, look. Now we have a chat, right? Um, yeah, that looks kind of like good. And I can just imagine this chat like rolling up and then like kind of fading. Um, and then we need, ooh, you know what we need? You know what we need? You know what we need? Um, to turn the opacity of this up so you can see it a little bit more. And I think you also need to get rid of or mess with the opacity of your chat box over here, right? Something like that. It's going to be something like that um, where you're able to chat over here and it doesn't in interfere with like your like gaming interface. Because again, the biggest thing is being able to see it. But we are going to need really quickly uh, expand and collapse type of interface uh, icon. Expand, collapse. Give me expand, collapse. What, ba -ba 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 -da -da, what am I looking for? Looking for this kind of thing. Um... Yeah, I'm looking for, yeah, this little icon right here. That's a great one, you know, and I'm looking to make it white and somehow this would be like on the screen and it would make this whole chat interface go away. We group that whole thing together and you can imagine like clicking on it and this goes down like that and it brings the chat back up into view, something like that. You know what I'm saying? You tracking with what I'm saying? Okay. Anyways, that's the thought. There's a, oh, wait. Oh gosh, I just had another thought. Okay, so there's another way where you could do this where instead of going like hyper full screen like this with the image, we kind of bring that up and yeah, and we kind of utilize a little bit more of this. Okay, watch this. Um, let's make the entire screen more like this color okay okay look at this uh let's bring this down let's make a chat bar here look at what we're doing here um bring it all the way over bring these controls on top who's liking this more who's like jesse you figured this out bro um and then we could maybe even keep this same chat style, and then we just have chat kind of cruising. <laughs> where, where did it go? Um, over here. We got to do that same hack that we did before, right? Where we uh, make this go away, and we make the black text white. And again, I wish 
that this worked. Let's get a few less of these and we will see if we can get this to work. Can we condense these and everything change? Yes, yes, girl, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's what we wanted. We want to be able to condense all of these little chat things and everything condenses inside like that. Now we're talking. Look, chat, baby. And then uh, you could take that same idea, right? Um, and you could put, boom, a chat icon like over here. This is a bad, I feel like a bad chat icon. Um, but it's, th it's that same idea, right? Like where we could do this and you could like just close the chat and open the chat full screen. Um, I actually, maybe I kind of like that better. I, th I feel like that's a little bit better. I feel like it's a little bit better. I could be wrong. Let's make this, let's bring the darkness of this back up. I'm gonna hit I, um, and let's make it the same color as the chat. So it feels like, look like, all this is like interface stuff and this is the stream that you should be watching. The only thing that I think it needs probably, cause we do need to have like some sort of designator in between is probably just like a line. Let's create a line and let's do a lighter version of this black, boom. And let's just pop this right there. You know what I mean? Um, that's not perfectly placed, but now at least you could see where like your chat box ends and where like the rest of the chat is actually like happening. I like this a lot more. Um, let's do that. Let's go with that. Okay, cool. Okay, let's do a little bit of layout here for our, I'm guessing like this is gonna be kind of like our all encompassing dashboard type thing. That's what we want. So let's do a little bit of work on that. Um, I think we probably, we have our bottom navigation down here and we this this is an aggregate view so we want to be able to see lots of different streams sort them out by streamer um what's going on right now maybe categories like games well that's because it's all about elden ring so maybe top categories or like top clips or something like that since it's narrowed down to one game it's going to make it very very easy right okay cool so um let's do something like this. I think we're probably gonna need some sort of little, we might need like a secondary navigation thing up here, like a hamburger menu. Um, we could we could grab one really quick. I'm just gonna open up Nucleo, which is like where I store my icons. And let's see if we can find one. You could probably create a hamburger menu faster than it takes for me to search for one in Nucleo, because it's like three lines. But let's just, let's just what's what do we have here for menu? Oh, great, we have some really boring menus. So let's just go up to like 24 pixels. Any style is fine. Yeah, okay, here we go, great. We found a hamburger navigation. Wow, wow, super easy stuff. Okay, but let's notice that we're 16 pixels from the left there, 16 pixels from the left here. Okay, I like it, so far so good. Um, you know, one thing we can start doing, I'm gonna break my own rules here probably pretty soon. I'm gonna start meshing the worlds of wireframing and designing together just for the sake of this stream right because i can't have the stream go on one hour at a time for the next year we're gonna have to kind of speed through it a little bit more and try to get a little bit more done that's all i'm saying so okay but for now let's let's keep cruising uh what's nice though is i can come over and grab any textiles that i might have had here and bring them in so this is montserrat semi bold 20. let's do something like um oh yeah about something it's not multiple streams it's elden ring um, um uh, let's just do something like a call to act or like a value proposition like the best elden ring content i don't know it's that's probably not what we wanted to say but let's just bump this up and make it a little bit bigger we never want it's either a widow or an orphan when you have one piece of like one word hanging on on a line i forget which one is which or a widow is at the top by itself and an orphan's down at the bottom i forget i can, I can never ever remember Let's drop down to like uh, 34 pixels, and we're we're not even we're not even really trying to yet like build out a typographic scale and all that fun stuff. We're just trying to. That's definitely not how you spell Elden. We're just trying to lay some stuff on the page right now. Okay, so um, ba -ba 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 -ba. let's move that up a little bit. Doesn't need to be so far away. And you know, I think a probably a good thing to do would be to create some little tabs or tabs or filters or some people might call these um, not tiles. Um, but we're going to do something here like 
all. Okay, let's bring the size of this down. Um, the chips, that's the word I'm looking for. Boy, I'm having a morning time. Brain fart here, let's go chips. We'll bring this down to like 18. We'll keep it at semi-bold. And then with this select, we'll click Shift A. Let's give this a fill, right? We're gonna make it kind of gray for now. And let's, let's make it a pill style thing. And to do that, uh, we have rounded the corners. Ooh, let's zoom in and see if we don't break all of the things in the world so you can see what I'm working on, okay? Um, all right, so what we wanna do is we wanna keep it centered using our auto layout and we wanna add some padding, right? So let's add some custom padding here where we do like 20 pixels on the left and the right. And then, well, let's, I tell you what, let's stick to the eight pixel grid here. Let's do eight times three. There we go, 24. Bam, okay, if you didn't know you could do math in there, now you know, you can do math, okay? So I've created my first kind of like chip that we need. We're gonna make sure all these things are being lined up on the left-hand edge, beautiful. And I'm going to Command C, Command V, create another one. I'm gonna grab both of them and Shift A, put them into an auto layout with eight pixels of space in between. It's not a vertical auto layout, it's a horizontal one, and we're gonna drip them off the canvas so the user knows that they can scroll through them. So let's just add, um, and maybe they're a little bit big still. So let's go, uh, we should go down to like 16 and 16. Look at that, we're keeping things divisible by eight, which I love. Okay, so let's do um, like, I don't know, posts, um, let's make a bunch of these in here that we can work on, okay? So, po and see how if I just copy and paste inside of an auto layout in Figma, they just add to the layout perfectly spaced. The whole thing is nice, okay? So all, post, uh, streams. These would be like popular things uh, that people might be like looking for. Hashtag, uh, no, let's do hashtag uh, bosses. Anything, that, anybody who has like, there we go. Anything that somebody has tagged within their stream would be great. Like how about hashtag dungeons? Uh, let's do hashtag um, armor, you know, something like that. Let's lead these over so we can see. And actually, if we want to really quickly, the best way to do this is let's add a little bit of padding onto it. Um, maybe something like eight pixels of padding. That looks great. We could bring that up into place. And then we want to, uh, we want to make this like, well, we're gonna do that later, but dungeons, armor, what else? Um, let's go, I don't know, hashtag, we're, we're talking a lot about like this certain streamer, Dr. Disrespect, let's say he's like, like uh, big talking points right now, like online. And another one could be, um, um, you know, uh, runes, which is a term in the game. Boy, I'm just, we're just nerding out right now, are we? Love it. Okay, let's make sure we grab this whole thing move our requirements out of the way and drag this in. It kind of, it, it got all wonky um, by dragging it outside of the artboard in Figma. It, we, we, it's not any longer contained in the frame. We need to do one thing really quickly. We need to take the padding off of the left-hand edge. So everything's lining up really crisply here, but we still have that eight pixels of padding everywhere else. And then what we want to do is when we're in prototype, we want to grab this element here and say no scrolling. Yeah, we want horizontal scrolling. Look, now when we put, let's rename this home or dashboard. This is our dashboard flow dash B-O-A-R-D. Great, we can press play on it. We should get immediate like horizontal scrolling for our little chips, which we do not. Why? Why don't we? Aha, I know why. Because this thing needs to be shortened, right? Okay, we create the container in which it's prototyping. So now we should get, yes, we can grab and drag. Beautiful, okay? And it even gets a little bit of that natural kind of like bounce that's happening in there. Love it. Okay, awesome. Now, if you want a little bit of space and you're like, ooh, it's, I don't like how close, watch when I drag over, it's sitting really close to the edge and I don't like that. Maybe you want just a little bit more space. It's really easy. Just Command C, Command V, make another one and bring the opacity of that final one. Where's the opacity? Boom, down to zero. It's like a phantom item or phantom element. Now, when you scroll over, you get you get a lot more space there, right? And you can you can just make that a little filler one, right? So like instead of it saying runes, we could bing, 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 uh, grab the whole thing, drag it over, and we'll just uh, we'll fill it like with nothing basically, right? Let's bring the opacity of it back down to, oh no, whoops, sorry. Boom, that one's runes. This one, 
needs to not say runes. It needs to say nothing. That's your little hidden bub sitting over there, right? Okay. And beautiful, perfect. Bringing it back into place. Just a little bit of organization. Perfect. Okay, so now look, when we come, we don't get too much space over here, but we get a little bit. And it actually landed perfectly. This is like a really basic, a really important but basic premise of creating off canvas or horizontally scrollable content on mobile, which is always leaving some sort of hint that it's there. When you see half of something overlapping, it's become a common pattern to tell the user, hey, this is scrollable stuff here, right? So now the user knows that they can scroll. Okay, great. Um, beautiful. Let's do one more thing. I'm going to take all of them, uh, except for our little hidden one. I'm just going to copy them and put them in there. Uno mas, one more time. Now we have a really long scroll which is fun. We'll probably come back in here eventually and replace those with components that are colored the right way and have all the right vibe and everything like that. But until then, let's just leave these wireframed as they are currently. Okay, great. Uh, I'm gonna do a little bit of space here, maybe 24 pixels of space. And then let's go 24. I'm going in uh, things that are divisible by eight. 48 from the top. Cool, we're about 24 from the bottom or from the, the chips that are there. Let's put a new, now we're gonna do aggregated categories, right? So let's do live now. And th this is, we're not creating our typographic scale, but we do need to consider headlines, subheadlines, all that kind of stuff, right? Okay, so this, I just dropped this down to like 22. We'll probably fix that. We'll work on it a little bit, okay? Live now. And then we're gonna create kind of, you know, we're kind of like reusing some of this live element stuff that's here and some of the elements are like this live card thing here and maybe like some other little elements that we've created. So for instance, I'm definitely gonna reuse this thing. I really like this bar. Uh, so I'm gonna reuse that thing maybe. Um, what else, what else, what else? Yeah, I mean, we kind of have a lot of the stuff we need. Let's bring it over. Reusing is always, always important, right? Like once you create something, stick with it. That way, uh, there's just more consistency. It's a learnability and a usability issue in UX. I'm thinking about UX right now. I'm thinking, hey, once somebody has seen it one time, they should see the same thing, right? It reduces, pardon me, the cognitive load of what the user is actually experiencing. It makes it easy for them to understand what's going on in your interface. Very, very important stuff. Back where we're at, we pulled some elements here and really what we're thinking is we're going to turn this somehow i didn't even really have to pull this but we need to create some cards right to represent the stream and then pop the some information on top of it so let's just uh let's get rid of this and if we did responsive resizing right our little live tab should stay anchored to the top right we did not do it right and hopefully it does not uh scale or do anything wonky no it does it perfectly just like we want okay cool so let's call this thing card love it and we'll bring it into our design and yeah that's right we're going to turn it into a little card here okay so i'm just going to pull this stuff closer because we might have to work on that um first off this this is in the mood for some rounded corners for sure that looks a little bit nicer um we have the image we're definitely going to need the gradient on top of it because we're about to put some we're about to put some stuff uh on it boom like that and good going from the bottom to the top we're gonna put some text over it i don't think we actually need our little live chiclet what i actually think we need is the information about the streamer and then who is currently watching how many people yada 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 all that kind of fun stuff okay so i know i have an image in there and you should never put an image in there yada 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 but that's what i'm currently doing okay let's take this trending thing off i also don't think we need uh yeah we'll keep the little tag thing there and we could actually bring down the size of that so that could be good um cool that could fit right there i yeah i think we need to get rid of the little verified symbol here it's like excess information this becomes a game of like hey what do we need to take away what's the type of information that needs to be experienced seen understood whatever at this point like at this current time right um from the outside right it's kind of like the outset we haven't clicked into that that stream or that stream page on a card as small as this, I need to give you level one basic info. If you go to our streaming page, right, where we have a list of streams, I need to show you a little bit more. And then when you get into the stream, I need to show you all the pertinent information, right? A lot of times we fail in our designs 
by crowding the interface, by overloading information where information should not be yet. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, and the, again, the real world way to think about this is standing outside of a house, I see that it is a house. Once I enter into the house, I see all the furniture that's used to decorate that room, right? But if I was to, A, bring all the furniture outside and put it in front so you could see all the furniture I have in my house, that doesn't make any sense. Likewise, it wouldn't make sense to enter into the house and have all the furniture from around the house be in one room, right? We place things in certain rooms and hopefully we tie it all together interior design wise to make sense of everything. That's what we're kind of doing here with information, with design and with style, okay? Okay, that was a kind of a weird analogy of the house, but I did my best. Here we go. Let's add uh, some more information here. I think we might need something like, um, can we just come in? Yes, I'm gonna hit uh, option L to, um, get rid of, it just collapses all of the, like the layers that I'm working on. I'm going to pop. Nope. I don't want it in there. Let's just pop it right there. Beautiful. Okay. In Figma, it really does matter. Like where are you, what you have clicked in your layers panel. And when you press paste the command V paste, cause it will paste it in context of wherever you have kind of selected. All right, let's just drop this down and it was 10 is pretty small. Let's try 12. Let's drop it down from semi-bold to like maybe medium. And let's go something like 55.2K. Uh, let's put the word watching. Uh, we'll do lowercase like this. Okay, it could probably be a little smaller. I don't recommend things being any smaller than 12. Usually 10 might work if we're doing a little chip like this. Okay, so now that we're here, shift A. I turn it into an auto layout. And let's just give it some sort of like background color. Um, I'm just going to give it a black background color for now because we're not worrying about that. I'm turning it into a pill, a pill style, right? And this is going to be kind of hard to see. So I don't really, I don't have a color in mind, um, but let's fill it with like a color for now, like something that's kind of streamer-y, like mountain dewy, like mm, that's a little bad. Let's go into more of the blue color. I like that. That could kind of work. We don't need it to be fully electric, you know, but Okay, cool. So let's uh, address the padding. I'll put this in the center. Eight pixels on each side there. Um, and I like that style that we had of 16 pixels each side on the left and right. Okay, so creating a little chiclet. I was wrong. This could jump back up to semi-bold so you can see it. We do need clarity, okay? Um, that's really, really big. So let's drop... Man, it's, sometimes it's just about eyeballing things and seeing like, oh man, I was certainly wrong about that. Let's go, yeah, a little tighter, right? Okay, great. And the contrast there is really bad. So maybe this is where we flip it and we do something like, you know, something like that. That could work. I don't know. Um, and maybe what's really happening is my card probably needs to be a little bit bigger. And then we don't have to worry so much about the text, right? The text could jump up to 12 because right now it's not really legible. I hate this color, FYI, Zs. Um, it just has really bad contrast. Like maybe we did something like purple would be a little bit more fun. Is that going to be our brand color? Wait, what do we do for mood boards here? Let's go back. Oh, that's right. We had this kind of golden yellow, this cornflower yellow kind of thing that was happening. Interesting. Yeah, that might work. The contrast there is okay. It's just okay. All right. So let's take some more of this text. Boom. We're going to pop it down below. What other kind of information? Um, bop, bop, bop. maybe like what would be kind of fun is like, um, a small description of what area they're, what are they trying to accomplish? Like maybe this, this is like a smaller kind of spot where the streamer puts what they're trying to accomplish. Um, and we'll probably bring the opacity of it down. So it's not super intense. Like let's do like 82 and we'll say, um, you know, conquering massive bosses and finding great runes. I don't know, something like that. Okay, we'll put it on auto height text. That way we can put it like so. Um, we are, are we, man, we are about 12 pixels away from the edge on all these things. That's okay, we like that. But that means we need to bring it back too. All right, cool. Um, okay, and let's put some little ellipse. That's like the little three dot that lets you know there's more. That's fine, I like that. I think that's good for a card. Um, I don't mind that at all. I do think we probably need some more interesting, um, you know, uh, Elden Ring imagery. 
Uh, okay, so let's go to images. Yep, up, 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 up. Let's do we have anything cool? Yeah, let's do. Oh, that's a cool shot. Let's just take that. Um, I shouldn't be worrying about. I absolutely should not be worrying. <laughs> it's ah, doggone WebP images. All right, we're just taking a screenshot of it instead. Whoop, just like that. Cool. Um, love that. And let's put that in where the image was. Much cooler. All right, we won't worry like really a lot about imagery, but I just want something else to like keep my visual interest, to pique my interest, okay? Now, the question is to drop shadow or not to drop shadow. I think not to drop shadow because here's the, the differentiator we need to make right now. Are we doing a dark interface? I think so, right? I think we kind of decided that here when we did like brand primary and then we had brand secondary and then we had the call to action color. So why don't we just apply that right now really quickly, shall we? Let's go brand primary. It's gonna be a dark interface. Mm, yes, it is, yes, it is. Um, and that means the rest of our stuff needs to be light. So let's just do, we're starting to build a little bit of a dark interface. I like that. If you're not used to building dark interfaces, you're gonna stay with me because this might work or not work. I like it, it's kind of like this really dark green. I wish I could get it doggone it just like a little bit darker it's like maybe a little bit less on the green side and a little bit more on the black side so there's just like this tinge so i'm gonna call this new color um i'm gonna add a new color i'm gonna put a uh, dark background because that's still a version of the color right it's just a little the dark side which i think is important okay um cool 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 we're, we're cruising we're cruising right now so here's the hard Ooh, it's, it's still not dark enough for me do you see that okay let's go in here and edit a little bit man we need to we need to edit even a little bit more here neutralize it we don't want it to be black right we don't want it to be blue we want it to be down here in this dark green yes okay that's much darker it's much better I'm much more into it, okay? Uh, some people are saying hi from India. Hello, right back to you. Uh, Abraham says, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for joining me on the stream today. Um, uh, how long have I been doing this project? I've been working on it for a couple weeks and only on stream. So there's been no, you know, no work going on in the background uh, so that I'm, you know, cheating or anything. It's all happening <laughs> here on the stream. I want you to see the imperfection of it all, okay? One thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a general overlay. Okay, to the whole thing, to just give me a little bit better contrast here on, yep, here on, on the card, okay? Um, and, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, uh, you can see it's kind of not really popping. Uh, that's popping a little bit more. We got rid of the gradient at the bottom, right? Because you have text at the top and the bottom. Um, and instead, I think we need to just bring, I think we need to bring the text uh, opacity all the way up. Let's try adding a little drop shadow. I don't usually do this, but let's make it really subtle, like down at 15. I think that adds just, let's zoom in so you can see. I think that adds just a little bit of clarity, right? If we watch you just take it off, put it back on. There's just the slightest bit of clarity there as we can see it, okay? So now we have this card. We need to make sure that it is all together. So let's make sure our tag is inside the card. Beautiful. Let's Space it out 16 pixels. I love it. Uh, shift A, put them both in an auto layout. Like we don't need this thing anymore. And then let's just add a few more in there. We're gonna do the same thing. Go to the prototype tab, say horizontal scrolling, but make sure that the size of the frame, right, is like crimped, like all the way up to the artboard. That when we go back now, whoop, and it's gonna update for us. Let's go update. We get some scrolling, we get scrolling here, we get scrolling here, beautiful. It's gonna start coming together. And it's really awkward to see like the grays, I think, um, of these like chips. So we'll come back, we'll fix those in a second. But let's make like some streamer cards now because I think that's important. How, the, these should be about 16 pixels, like the content from the headline, because we wanna start creating some sort of vertical rhythm, right? Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go, 24 from the top and whatever the next content is is going to be 16 pixels again right let's just uh let's steal this because i'm thinking these cards down here these like streamer cards right let's do like pop euler streamers oh my gosh my spelling my typing today str streamers popular streamers whatever cards go down here 
should probably mimic a certain like a similar style there uh, of the chips that are happening above so what is that style let's look at it um i'm gonna actually fill it with white and then bring that white opacity down a little bit hmm, 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 hmm. we're gonna have to experiment and play here a little bit we are gonna lose some of the rounded corners and just round it something like 16 pixels and these cards are gonna be much bigger i think maybe we should try filling it with black Ooh, i don't know um i feel like that's wrong Ooh, that's kind of interesting 10 pixel or 10 percent on the color and then we do something like that right okay so it's actually it's allowing the color from behind it to pop through um and we'll probably let's release this from an auto layout boom, boom, boom. oh watch out now Okay, we want to release it from the, how do we release it from the auto layout? We go like this and remove auto layout. Shift option A should remove it. Now it's just a frame that I can move things around in. That's what we like. And I tell you what, we're gonna come back up and we're gonna grab this stuff here. Boom and boom, I like you. All this information. Oh, where are you? Home screen, there you go. Okay, and we're in the frame, we're popping things in, just like that, and it's centered. That kind of that kind of works, except let's change this, same style, different content, to something like nine, uh, 7.2 million followers. Okay, this is where the auto layout might actually come back into play, right? Okay, shift A, auto layout that, boom. Love it. Okay, move it over here. Uh, shift A, it's already in an auto layout. We fill it. What do we have going on here? We had the fill down at like 10% and now we're just gonna do it with padding and we're gonna do around those corners. We've recreated it using auto layout. Oh, and now look, no matter what happens, it's always in the middle. Ah, it looks so good. I like that, okay. The padding's a bit much, right? So let's bring the padding down. Something like 24. I like that a little bit better. Um, and yeah, let's just keep it like this. Here, you know what? We could art, let's make a little ED, a little executive decision. We'll pop that in there right there. We're using our little call to action color as like something really important, right? Okay. Um, and then look, we're gonna collapse our layers. Command C, Command V, paste another one of these. It's 16 pixels away. Look at that, shift A, put it in another one. Oh, copy and put a bunch of them out there. You know the routine. Come in here to prototype and make sure that it scrolls horizontal. Beautiful, oh, but, but we need to bring the size of the frame back, okay? Look, now when we go preview, we should be able to slide those, slide these, and slide that. It's all looking really good. The only problem I'm having now is I'm a little bit too close here, aren't I? I need to be 16 pixels from my sub headline. It's kind of coming together, kind of digging it. You know, that's probably good. Let's stop for now and let's fix these things up um, to kind of match because these have like a 10% uh, 10 white background, right? Okay, so let's make this white at 10%, yikers. And then we need to bring the that thing up. I think that works and then we need to have like a selected and a deselected state. So let's just really quickly, I'm going to turn these things into components and then we'll go from there. Okay. Um, yeah. So this has the fill, not the overarching thing has 10%. So I think this one is going to need to pump back up to a hundred percent and we're going to need to fill it with our call to action color. Now, again, if we don't like our call to action color, we're getting bad contrast here. Here's another opportunity, which side note really quickly before we go too much further. I need to fix the padding on these bad boys because they are a bugging me. Let's go to 12. I don't like leaving my eight pixel niceness, but I think this needs to, this needs to go to 12. I need a little bit more breathing room, a little bit of elbow room there. I just did like the funky chicken dance as I did elbow room. That's fine. I don't mind. Uh, okay, so let's really quickly here. Um, I'm going to grab both of these and inside of Figma, I'm going to drop this down. I'm going to say, create a component set. Oh, where did it go though? There you are. Okay. 
Let's actually pull that out, put that there. And we have property one. Um, and let's, and I don't know, let's, let's cover this really quickly because creating property sets and fig or variants inside of Figma is important. Let's rename this component to, um, what do we call these? We call these not tiles, not chiclets, um, pill, not pills. Um, I, I can't remember. I sometimes I just blank. I'm going to, I'm going to call it a, a chiclet right now, but we're probably going to update that because it's not a chiclet. <laughs> okay. And then, um, and then let's come in really quickly. And we are going to name, and here's how you name the properties and things inside, uh, chips. Thank you. Not chiclet, chips. Okay. Chip. There we go. Thank you. Brain fart. Here we go. Um, we're going to rename the property. The property is going to be state. Okay. And then we'll call the first one active like that. Okay. Beautiful. We'll come in here and do the same thing. State. Uh, and we'll call this one inactive. Let's, I hope that we uh, named the right things. We did not. So this one needs to be active and this one needs to be the inactive one. Beautiful. Okay. So now you'll notice as I click on these, I have states that have been created. I have active, I have inactive. I can rename them there, right? So I've named, I've created the property myself. And if you need to create another property, okay, you can come in and you could either do it in the control panel or you could do here. You just do a comma and then you do the new one, right? Um, we could have made this uh, like a toggle switch also. If, did you know that inside of Figma? So instead of doing like state, we could have put like, um, I don't know. Let's let's make a variation here like long uh, equals true, right? Um, I think that's how you do it. Let's try that. Boom, like that. And then we would come down here and do the same thing, long equals false, okay? Now, when we zoom out and go over and see, oh, how do we make the toggle switches? I forget, that's not right. False or true, boom, boom, boom. There is a way to make one though, and I forget how to make the toggle switches inside. Is it Boolean? It's like making a Boolean value. If anybody remembers out there, let me know, because I totally forget. Um, ba, 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 is it inside of parentheses? Nope. Um, ba, 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 ba. I don't know. I forget. But let's so let's just delete it. There is a way to do it, but I forget it. On off. Mm, I don't think that's the way to do it. But anyways, there is a way to do it. I'll try to find it. I'll post it on social media recent soon. Okay. So with that being said, we can come over to our assets panel and we can drag in. Oh, not into it, but there instead. Bing, bing, just like that. Let's do another one here, and then let's change it to our inactive state. Beautiful. Love that. Um, love it. Okay, but let's just make sure they're the same, you know, all like that. Okay, and then we can name them here, and it should be recursive bosses, right? So what I mean by recursive is if we go from active to inactive, it it keeps the text that's inside, which I'll tell you some other design programs do not do, uh, but I love that Figma does that for us, okay? So with that being said, we can come back over to layers and let's get rid of all of these other, except for our little hidden chip. I'll just name that and I'll keep that there. We want our little hidden chip to stay, okay? We like our hidden chip, but let's keep our the rest of them and we'll just boop, 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 boop. we'll make a bunch of them there and now it's looking a little bit more like an intentional interface okay we come here that looks nicer doesn't it i like it it's a dark interface it's not fully black right um but it is working i think and we might have to come back and make oh my goodness let's go back 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 to our current interface and we can drag these drag those and we can drag those. Now, let's answer the question of contrast, shall we? Um, on, off, zero, or none. Mm, interesting. That could be it. I forget how to do it. But we're talking about like the little Figma toggle switches for properties. Oof, we'll have to figure that out. Um, let's discuss our color. Do we love our color? Does it need to change? It might need to. So to do that, I'm going to... This is I, this is what I like, right? I like exploring now. Let's keep this. Um, let's explore that, that call to action color by clicking here and we can kind of experiment. It doesn't need to get darker so that there's better contrast. I'll tell you one thing that's frustrating me is my chip, my active chip is using it, but 
It is not responding. Why isn't it responding? Ooh, it should respond, right? If it's rooted there. Um, but, okay. I tell you what, maybe, maybe, maybe. We need to have a similar chip style for all of these. Let's drop these, this, these chip style text sizes down 16 to 14, and then we'll use the same chip inside, shall we? Let's do it. Okay, I'm gonna come in here and don't like this. So I'm gonna pop that in there. Yikes! Let's get this out of the frame. Booyah, get rid of the other one. Okay, good. All right, awesome. Now we can do that same text in there, like 55.2K watching. And it's a little bit bigger, uh, which I, th I feel like I'm fine with. You know, it's not bad to have different sizes of, of like chips, but I do like the consistency. Where did, this is our first card here. Let's get rid of the rest of these cards. And boink, like that. And put a couple more back in there. Now we're using the chips. Now I'm almost positive. I'm almost positive. If we go to change our call to action color, it should change everywhere like that. See that? Okay, cool. Okay, so let's grab this really quickly. Uh, our color and let's experiment with a darker version of the color, right? There's a little bit more contrast there for sure. Um, or maybe we just needed like a different color altogether, right? Maybe we needed it to be like that, right? That's bad contrast. That's better contrast. That's great contrast, although it's dull, right? So maybe what we need to do is go really bright contrast with something like this and then instead change the text inside for the active one to be black. Look at that. That's much better. Now we've deviated from our color plan a little bit on, on the mood board. That's okay, right? Um, and and maybe, maybe, you know, you guys are talking about it out there. Maybe you're right. Maybe we, maybe we don't need to change the color, but maybe we did just need to go to the black. So let's go here and we'll edit it. Pop the old color in. You're right. The black could work too. But I do really like I do really like this color. I'm just gonna I'm gonna deviate. I tell you, I really like this color a lot. Um, okay, coming in here, there's zero contrast on this little fella because we need to turn that black so you can see it. So it punches. It's just it's a little bit more streamery, isn't it? I think so. Okay, the green is working for me. People are saying I know, isn't it? I think it's good. Okay, let's come up here really quickly. Uh, this is a frame. I don't know if that works. So let's just do O for ellipse really quickly and come up. I'm going to open up my my fast kind of like menu here, command forward slash, and then I'm going to look up uh, UI faces. Let's just fill this with an avatar right quick. I don't care where it comes from. Any of these ones is fine. Give me an avatar. <laughs> Definitely more streamery, somebody said. Yeah, I think so too. Okay. So uh, here's our streamer, or excuse me, here's our user's uh, avatar. This one is 39 by 39. That was a weird size. Let's go 42 by 42. We'll keep some a little bit of sensical like interface sizes here. Okay. Uh, let's boop, boop, 20 out of the way there and boop, boop, 20 back. It kind of disappears. What do you need? You probably need a little bit of a white stroke around it, I think, like that. And then you know what else you need? What if you have like notifications or something like that? You probably also need another little oval here using our call to action color, bink. Now we have a little notification that gets a white stroke of its own. I love it. I love it. Okay, it looks a lot better. Okay, let's make sure that this is lining up with our nav or our nav menu here, which I think needs to be just a little bit bigger. And now we can reline it up. Love it. Okay, cool. Group this together. Group that whole thing together. It is now one. Ah, this definitely looks more streamery, right? Okay. Um, uh, James says, I know a lot of streamers and they would like this. I'm glad. I'm glad to, I'm glad to hear you say that. Okay. Um, and I think that our little, our little elements there are working for us. Let's, I forget what we did in there one time. It was like a dungeon. Um, uh, yeah, let's go. Uh, I know this is a popular one. Rune farming. That's where people cheat, not cheat, but they're finding places to kind of cheese and get like a bunch of runes that maybe maybe they wouldn't find anywhere else that's a funny one okay let's bring the opacity of that text down just a little bit and this has really really bad legibility i'm going to be really hard on myself here and say what on earth we need to go from regular to maybe like medium there 
and ooh, nine is really small, but let's try it. Let's see what it looks like here, okay? I'm gonna look in the app. I think it looks a lot better like this. I really do. This is starting to come together a little bit. And let's just do one more thing. Um, let's go your Elden Ring companion. I actually don't mind it being like a, a piece of text on the line by itself. If we can do something intentional, uh, or why not just add the word app? Let's put that there. Easy peasy. Um, I tell you what, let's change the color of this to boop, your Elden Ring companion app. And we'll take the whole thing and move up from semi-bold to bold. Oh, we're looking really streamery now, aren't we? Okay, we're like a bit wonky. So I'm going to grab all of these elements and bring them up to be 24 pixels from the top. I think that looks a little bit better. And we still have room for like something else down here, or we could space out more, or we could make our cards like a little bit bigger. Let's end today by uh, by figuring out what the bottom navigation might look like. Um, I'm just gonna do this so you can see like some content uh, that might, I don't, I don't actually, actually, you know what we could do, bink. Uh, I'm gonna group these together, this headline and this content, headline and content. Um, and we kind of have consistent spacing, 24 pixels, right? So I'm just gonna shift A, put these into an auto layout, and I'm gonna do another one like so, and I'm gonna grab that whole auto layout and make sure it's behind. We should still be able to, yes, in our auto layout, we can grab things and move. Yes, beautiful, perfect. Now our auto layout can actually shrink to something like that and we can say in prototype hey if you can't see everything you can't get to everything do do a little vertical scrolling right um but that's messing up our top section which we need to bring into that auto layout i think let's just bring all these elements uh into that auto layout like so and do they need to go to the top they sure do like that pink and Let's restructure a little bit. Good. We're just messing things up a whole bunch. We like it. Okay, now should be able to scroll. Wonderful. Can scroll any of these sections. But what's not in the lay auto layout is this bottom anchored navigation, which is staying fixed, uh, fixed position on scroll, right? Okay, cool. Uh, so we could put some sort of new headline here, like uh, 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 favorite clips. I'll just put clips here like that. I like it. And then we need to figure out now what this bottom anchored nav looks like. Notice that in Figma, in the left-hand side, it says, it gives you distinction here. If we zoom out and look at it again, it says these things are fixed and these things scroll. I can't see it when I do it like this. Sorry, here we go. Look, it says, here's your nav that is fixed. And then here is your content, right? It it's gonna scroll. I like that. I just love how Figma does that. I think it's amazing. Uh, this is not a Figma sponsored stream. I just like Figma. They're big. I'm a big fan of the Figma. Okay, here we go. Linear, and then we're almost done here. Let's fill the bottom with black and the top with black, but then the bottom goes like that and the pop just like so. Beautiful. Okay, we're gonna make that a lot bigger. I think the container for this needs to get bigger and all of our elements inside, I think, need to stay rooted and anchored down to the bottom. That means we can grow. Oh, you didn't do what I told you to do. Um, maybe everything needs to stay. Hmm, that's weird, dude. No, I, I messed it up. Space between. Yep, here we go. There we go. Now we can grow it. It looks a lot better. Come into linear. What color will it be? I think that's more the dark color of our interface. And then, yeah, and then it needs to come up. Yep, just like so. Okay, but bring the opacity of it down at the top and I think make it even bigger. We want things to kind of disappear there a little bit, don't we? Yeah, yeah, that looks good. Um, and then we could add, let's like for our active state, I'm, I'm assuming this is our active state, let's just, take the color, the selection color really quickly and fill it like that, okay? We're gonna fix that and put icons in there and stuff like that, but this is the end for us today. We probably need to lift and elevate this bottom navigation a little bit more, but for the most part, 
I think this works. I think it's a good start to our streaming app. It does, if you notice, has a little bit of this off kind of green color, and then we're kind of accenting it with a streamer green. I think it's a little bit more bold and in your face. I think this works good. Notifications, we're using kind of that 60, 30, 10 rule that I did a video on recently. So if you don't know about that, go check it out. We can still kick over to streams and then uh, we'll update that obviously, of course, but we can kick over to streams and then choose a stream and we'll be able to go back. But now we've done a little bit of design work. Um, I have actually kind of renamed my layers. I know this is gonna be kind of a boring topic, but I think it's worth kind of just checking out really quick. I make these big headlines here that annotate work streams, right? This is gonna be everything that has to do with the streams page, everything that has to do with the dashboard. And then I'm, I kind of label those over in my layers panel. Um, and then I pop like these, just a bunch of dashes in there. So they kind of look like separating lines actually in between um, my, all of like the different sections I'm working on. That's just something I do. It's something I've gotten used to doing. Okay, so um, we, I think we, let's just do a little UI design here and start to solidify because I'm actually gonna take this um, and I'm going to move it all. So I'm gonna right click after I've selected them, move them all to the design page because they are past the wireframing phase, aren't they? And we'll get rid of this. And we are, we are fully into the design phase. Now, uh, something else we should do is let's create another page really quickly. And let's call this page uh, system like that. And that's where we're actually gonna take our chip because this is like kind of the first component that we've created. And let's actually move that over to our system page. Beautiful. And just like that. Okay, great. So now we have kind of organized our design. We're starting to, uh, um, oh, the volume is low. People are saying, man, I hope not. Um, I'm so sorry about that. Let's just check really quick. Nah, it's pretty high. That's, I just checked it. It sounds pretty good to me, uh, but I will pull the microphone a little closer and speak a little clearer and in hopes that that helps you. All right, so we have this little, uh, like the first, the beginning of our design system. Let's go back over to our design. Is there anything else that we had that could become some kind of element? Absolutely, right? Like this little thing right here. We might actually just do like a little bit of rebuilding of, <laughs> sorry, Rocket, I, uh, it, it's, let me know if anybody else agrees with Rocket that it is too quiet, but I, and I will try to fix it. But right now, uh, I have my sound like quality pretty nice on my setup. So, um, okay. So for instance, like this little chip, right? These are called chips. Um, I guess it's kind of the same thing as this. So what I kind of want to do is I'm going to grab this card of ours and I'm going to come over. And I'm going to paste it in here because I might want to turn our cards into reusable components, right? Um, okay, so that's what we're gonna try to do. So first thing that I would need to do is I'm gonna come into my assets, I'm gonna grab my chip, and I'm gonna drag it in here, and let's just change the text inside of it. See, we made one chip that has multiple purposes. I like that, it was about seven away. That's kind of a weird spacing, so let's do 10. Let's do eight, because we like things divisible by eight. Okay, so far so good. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. And let's make sure that our responsive resizing is pinned whoop, to the bottom, just like that. Now our card, again, should be pretty responsive, okay? Um, oh, there's not a whole lot else to do. We could, I suppose, uh, we could do something with our avatar here which is 26. We have a bunch of avatars being used in our design, right? We have them here, we have them up here, um, and we have them in our cards. So the card version is pretty small. These are uh, 36. So I think 36 or 42 are both divisible by eight. So I think we should actually just do an avatar um, that's kind of built out as 32. So with that said, I'm gonna drag out an oval now, this one is actually a frame and this one is a shape. Now, the reason you might choose to do a shape over a frame, right, is because you might wanna use a plugin like UI Faces and be able to just fill it really quickly and it can only fill shapes. So that's just kind of a little thing to think of or keep in mind. I'm gonna put a stroke on this. It's a one pixel stroke and then I'm gonna make a component out of it, right? We're just gonna call this avatar. So avatar, just like so. Okay, and then I don't like to capitalize any of my my components that I'm making. So let's do avatar here. Now you could, if you wanted to, you could make variations with different sizes. I don't think you need to do that. I think you can literally pull out an instance of this and you should be able to just size it down, no problem, right? So this one in here is about 26. 
Um, we just want to do something like eight times three is 24. Ooh, I tell you what, one thing we have to do is make sure that we just lock the constraints of it. So eight times three is 24, not 26. 26 is not divisible by eight. So we want to keep things really, really divisible. Okay, beautiful. Um, now we have some, I believe we have some typography styles. If we don't, it's probably time to start dictating some typography styles, right? Uh, Artemis Faye says, do I ever use a soft eight grid, which we will talk about. We're going to do question and answer time. That's going to be the first question that I answered because that's a great question. Um, this is 12 pixels, semi-bold Montserrat. Let's turn this into a text style, shall we? We'll just call this, um, we'll call this, let's start for now. We'll call this body slash small. Okay. Um, and we're going to call this one, which is 14. We'll call it body slash large. Okay. Uh, body slash large that's the largest that you would want the body copy to be maybe i don't know we'll see this one is 14 and so let's just make sure we're using large and it keeps its color which is really really nice okay so now we have some text styles built into our our thingamajig there um okay pretty cool now what we can do is take this whole card and turn it into boop, into a component named card and if we want to, we can start organizing these into artboards a little bit, okay? It's because we have our card built and it is a component. It's reusable. It's ready to go. So we're going to go back into our design here. And Artemis says, thank you. That was incredibly helpful. Now, I'm so glad. I'm so glad that that was helpful. Now, we do have some uh, grids turned on. And I always forget what the hotkey is for turning and on and off our layout grids. It should be control G right there. Control G will turn them on and off. And you can see I have a pixel grid. I have a column grid laid out, right? I'm not really adhering to them right now, but I will in a little bit. So first I'm going to grab my assets. I'm going to drag a new card in. This is our component. Love it. Okay. Let's go back to our layers. You can see we have lots of cards in our layers list, but now we have an instance of our component. What we want to do is go one, two, three, four, and we want to get rid of all of the other ones that were in there that were not instances. Why do we want to do that? We want to do that because if later on I decide, excuse me, let's go to our system. I really want to move this thing over here. Then all of a sudden it's moved in all of my cards everywhere throughout my design. Isn't that better? Isn't that better? It really is. Okay, so let's go back to our design. Everything's looking good now. And now with instances in your design tool, XD does this, Sketch does this, Figma does this, you should be able to override the instance and add something to it. So for instance, I'm going to grab, like a, I said, four instance when it comes to this instance. That was horrific. Okay. Um, <laughs> never ever say that again in the same sentence. Now we can drag other images inside right so i can say hey i want to fill this image with that or fill this card with this one beautiful and if you're like oh how do i get to those other cards i'm going to grab my artboard i'm going to turn off clip content and look that's why frames are beautiful that's why frames are not just artboards frames are containing elements that we can control any way that we want to right so we've said now hey in this frame just for a minute right please turn off the clipping that naturally happens on frames and contains everything inside of it. I want to see everything drip over the edge. It's so easy. It's so good when you do that. So I'm just dragging images that I have of the game on here so we can see. Beautiful. Okay, I like that. Let's go in and let's also fix some of the content. But before we do that, oh, see, this is where it gets really good, right? We can come in here probably. Let's paste another one of our cards really quickly. And why don't we just really quickly hide this chip that's on our our thing right because we don't need that anymore and let's resize it to be more of this size uh like that we have that represents a clip of a stream right so now we're taking one ui element and we're just we're just kind of modifying it a little bit to serve multiple purposes that's what we want okay so i like them being a little bit smaller like this um where do we put it i'm gonna x right here beautiful i'm gonna go into the frame in my layers panel bam i popped a nice new card now i think i did my cards a little bit taller but actually i think i like this shorter size here um you know because we're kind of creating stylistically 
we have a vibe that we're creating, right? Rounded corner cards for a lot of things, right? And then we also have like pill style buttons, chips, and tags. So everything's a little bit soft, a little bit rounded, but we're reusing those styles all over here. We're using them in our like streamer cards, in our stream cards, and then in our live stream cards. I know that's like a lot of the same terminology, but it's different, I promise you. But what's really cool is now we can do the same thing. We just pop, pop, pop. And let's get rid of all of the static versions and we are in business, okay? Now, again, we can just come in and replace some of the imagery real quick because these are like clips. So let's pop some clip content inside there. Beautiful. Um, this game has like a lot of um, like similar colors, you know, when you're like playing <laughs> with they can feel a little bit dreary kind of tone. That's okay. We're just going to pop those in. All right. That looks really good. Now let's use a, a couple of plugins here to update content quickly. Like for instance, we notice um, that on all of these cards, right? They're using the same image. We don't want that. So we're going to grab all of the images here boom, that are represented and th those there as well. Beautiful. I'm going to hit command forward slash to open up my fast kind of picker inside of Figma. I'll hit UI faces and let's just apply avatars to all of those and it should go. Almost there. While it's going, I'm going to take a sip of my coffee because it's, oh, there it is. It replaced all my avatars. Beautiful. Okay. So we've updated the avatars. Now what we need to do is update the names, right? So, okay. Uh, we've already updated the names there. Let's come into our cards kind of update these names again open up my fast picker i'm going to do another plugin called content reel and i'm just going to pick these full names first and last and it gives me a list of full names i just apply all boom it just applied them everywhere throughout my thing and you can create your own content list in there so maybe it's like gamer tags or usernames or whatever you could do all of that as well now everything is looking pretty good why don't we clip the content back in really quick press play and let's see what we get here on our prototype. So far, so good. <laughs> Artemis Face said, uh, design puns. That's a new one for me. Okay, good. All right, awesome. So look, now we can back and forth, looking pretty good here. These cards are made out of reusable components, right? Um, beautiful, right? These cards are soon to be reusable components. And these little clips cards are also reusable components, right? Okay, love it. Everything's looking really good right now. Let's finish up and build a few more things into our design system. And the reason we, we, we like to build things into our design system like this as we're going is because it's going to make the next step where we build our stream list page and a bunch of other interfaces really easy. We've already established colors that we have here, right? We're starting to establish text. Um, we're starting to establish UI patterns, like, and we just reuse, reuse, reuse over and over and over. That's the idea, right? So it starts to build momentum. And then, man, you are off to the races. So let's do the same thing here with this thing. Love this really quickly. I like this text, right? We need to bring this into our text styles. We're going to call this uh, headline slash sub headline, something like that. Uh, or maybe it's just sub headline slash uh, small, right? Okay, good. So we've done he sub headline slash small. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. We need to go plus here. There we go. Sub headline slash small. Beautiful. Okay. So now we're just making sure that all of those other ones are using our new sub headline slash small. And let's do headline like this. We're going to create a new style here. Go headline slash large. Okay. Now I'm not going to get into how you style, how you format. That's a whole design system stream. I'm just doing it really, really loosely right now. But for the most part, it's looking pretty good. We're using styles consistently through everything, I think, um, which is nice. And this is 14. So let's go back into our system and just make sure that we're using stuff here for everything. It should be the same type styles or, or font styles for everything if we can. That way, if we change it in one place, we change it everywhere. That's constantly the general idea, okay? So I'm gonna grab one of my little mini cards here come back into my design system and let's uh, just paste it right here. What do we need to do? We obviously need to replace the avatar with our avatar, 
Okay, boom, boom, just like so. Aha, let's put it on that side, love it. Keeping it 42 by 42, love that, okay. Uh, this is 14, so we gotta change the type style to be 14. This one is nine, golly, that is small. But let's just say, let's just say we'll go with it. I don't love it, I think I'm breaking my, my, uh, my rules here, but let's go caption slash small, and that's what we'll title that thing. And really quickly, I'm gonna drag one of these out here. I'm gonna turn it into a component. And what are we gonna call this component? We're gonna call this component uh, check mark. Okay, check mark. And let's drag an instance of that check mark in there instead of that. So again, now we can change this one time. It'll change everywhere. Let's name this layer um, uh, user card like that and then we'll turn it into a component and it should be it's using auto layout so the whole thing should be pretty extendable so we should be able to come back in here now assets bring our card onto the screen here boop, 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 do. let's just try it really quickly we'll command x sometimes it's hard to get into multiple frames so i'm just clicking in in my layers panel here on the left and then popping it in there. Now you can hold down command and use left or right bracket to move things around in auto layout. See how it moved around there like that perfectly? We love that. And then copy, do a bunch of those, get rid of the static ones. And then we just have to do that process again one more time where we unclip the content and we'll put some new avatars inside of here. Beautiful like this. Uh, what was it? UI faces, apply those avatars like so pretty good and then do the same thing with content reel we will grab all of these names and we'll say content reel give me the full names apply all beautiful and because it's auto layout do you see how it changed the size of the cart it just auto expanded amazing that means like if Teresa's web is for some reason in there two times it expands the card out oh my gosh it's so extendable thank you Figma for doing that for us okay boom we're gonna clip everything back again, and I hit uh, Option L just to collapse all my layers in Figma. Dude, we have a prototype now that is built out of 100% completely reusable components so far. Reusable color styles, reusable textiles, reusable cards and components, and the whole thing flows really, really nice. Um, let's see, I think the last thing we need to do before we start applying all of these styles is I think we need to fix our navigation at the bottom and we just need to create a consistent uh, on off type deal to our, yeah, yeah, we need to create a reusable, a, some reusable navigation items here, I think. Okay, so let's unlock our nav that we have over here. You can notice that I have, I have the nav staying fixed on scroll and everything else scrolls, right? So, but let's unlock that really quickly so that we can actually get to our navigation here. All right, the question becomes, do we make uh, a component, out, an interactive component out of the entire nav bar? Or, or do we, um, yeah, I think we probably do. I was gonna say, do we do them individually and then just put them down there? I think we just do the whole thing, right? I'm gonna copy this nav, I'm gonna go to system really quickly and let's paste it in here. There's our navigation and I tell you, it's inside, this whole thing has the fill on it, which I don't mind, I think that's fine actually. Let's just keep it like so. Um, the first thing we need to do is call this nav icon. And we need to pull one of those out like so. And we need to do a second version. Um, and we need to make everything in there white, right? Where's white at? Hello, I need a new, I need a break and go can't believe I don't have white as part of my design system. So let's just come in here and make sure that we add, uh, you know, um, so I don't know, I'm, I'm like mumbling here. Um, I guess it's system, I, now let's call it brand, uh, B-R-A-N-D, it slash, when I do the slashes, it kind of files it away for me. Let's just do brand white uh, like this, that's fine, okay. So, okay, we're gonna grab both of them. See what I'm doing here? I'm gonna grab both of them. And I'm going to, instead of turning it into a component, I'm going to say, hey, give me, create a component set that immediately creates my, um, my variants 
for me, right? So this one's gonna be called default. Uh, let's actually call this one active. And this one is gonna be called inactive, like so, okay? So now we have two of those, beautiful. Um, we should be able to, um, ba -ba 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 -da um, yeah, we should be able to now recreate our navigation using our nav items like this, okay? Um, so let's just see if I put that in there, see how it's spacing it out because on our, on our, um, auto layout that we have here, it's actually using this awesome feature called space between, which is constantly just spacing things out. That way our navigation can be this wide or this narrow, and it's going to try to space it out perfectly for us. Let's get rid of home. It'll space it out nicely. That's our active one. Let's do another one here and let's make it inactive and let's retitle this streams and let's see you know what's interesting oh do we might need to get into like a really a really interesting um yeah we might need to get into a really interesting thing here where we do icons first so let's do this okay uh I'm going to go, I'm going to build an icon set and then all of those are going to be the same icons. Um, here you have your home icon and let's just open up all these frames really quickly because we look, we have the to do icon, the treasure map icon, the document icon, the video icon, and I'm going to paste all of those here. See that? Okay. So you have all of those icons. I'm going to rename them really quickly to icon dash home and icon dash i'm gonna grab the rest of those so icon dash uh stream i'm just gonna name all of these icon dash to start with in my layers panel icon dash uh guide love that icon dash map and icon dash tasks okay i'm gonna grab all of them i'm gonna do the same thing they should all be the same size, which is very important here, okay? All of them are the same size. So when I put them in, they're gonna be flawless. I'm gonna create a component set. I'm gonna call this icons and see, I named all of them icon slash. When it organized all of them, it, it dropped the icon out of there and just renamed each one of them. So that's their property, right? Beautiful. So now what we need to do inside of here is we need to come into our assets and we need to drag an icon in here instead like that aha now we're talking okay and now we can give it whoa 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 here the selection color is going to be the cta beautiful like that okay so we should be able to now shouldn't we inactive property we should be able to come in and select yes just like that so double click inside and we can now swap what the icon is home we want streams there okay look so we can get rid of this and we need another one called guides okay so this one's gonna say guides and the icon that we use is gonna be guide beautiful let's get rid of that and we are gonna do um, map here and we are going to switch that to map so we can get rid of that so we're just rebuilding this reusable kind of like um, bottom navigation here tasks here and select the icon and switch it to task okay now we can get rid of tasks and we have a beautiful navigation that's built out of icons and then we have turned them into nav icons okay and now we're taking those and we're embedding them into our nav which we will turn into a component like so i think let's see let's see if we've done this the right way it should be done the right way okay so let's just press okay nav like that okay beautiful um and then we can have variants of this nav i believe we should be able to right so let's create our first variant of the nav we'll hit variant here and and we probably could have done this an easier way but i just wanted to show you like how you can use interactive components how you can do nested components so on and so forth so this next one is going to be called streams and what are we going to do we're going to make this one active and make this one inactive beautiful okay and let's make 
another variant. So, boom, another variant here and active on guides, inactive here. And the whole thing is going to be called this time guides. I know this is a little bit of the tedious work, but once we're done doing this, it's going to really, oh, hello. Come back to me. Come back to me. Inactive, active. Why aren't you doing that that time? That's okay. Figure it out. We Somehow we overrode it. That's okay. So let's fix that. One more or two more. Um, and let, actually, let's just stop there for now. Let's stop there. We'll take away that variant because this is all we need for now. We can keep adding variants later, but now we should be able to come into our layers, back to our design, actually grab our asset, drag this out. Okay. Get rid of this guy and we're going to drag this, not messing with our auto layouts there, but we're going to put it at the bottom and we want to, of course, fixed position when scrolling. So we're going to hit that. Now it's fixed. It stays exactly where it needs to stay. And we can create uh, it like, for instance, let's say over here we have our next screen and we don't know what this is going to be. This is going to be like our stream list, our list page. All we'd have to do is come in here and say, Hey, take me to streams. Okay. And we've switched we've switched the component there, right? At the bottom. So as soon as we switch over, we'll see the, the change. That's one way to do it. Uh, you can also create the interactive component on the flip side instead in the system. So anytime you click on one, it flops over. You could do that as well. That's a, that's a thing you can do. But this is now actually, it is the start of our, of our, our streams page or our list page. Uh, so we'll put stream list right there. And that was the last of the reusable components that we really needed to do. Let's come back to wireframes here and let's see how we had like what we were trying to work on there. So let's bring this whole thing over. I'm going to X this actually copy this. And for some reason I renamed the page there. I didn't mean to do that, but let's come back in and just paste this over here. We're working on a new work stream and it's going to be, the streams page, just like so. So I have the wireframe off to the side and we'll pull all these in so we can kind of work on them together. Okay, so what do we have? Um, you know, we had these UI cards, great. We have this like top kind of like area here. So we're gonna call this top nav. Let's just copy and paste that in um, and it was spaced 32 from the top and it should have been about 15 pixels or so from the side. That's fine. So 32 from the top, boom, 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 like that. And let's just make sure it's centered. Beautiful. Okay. So it's going to look really similar. And then why don't we just grab one of our cards and come in here and paste it in and we can do a little bit of editing now. Right? So let's kind of move it over to the side. Again, we have a reusable component. How big do we say? this or how high how tall 208 pixels so this is about 216 that's good that it doesn't have to be dead on we can be a little bit playful with it and this may be where we create a variant of our card right because we have different like the the elements in different spots so that's fine let's come back to our system and let's create a variant of our card uh where we just hit variant and what is this variant i think it was boom boom, boom. let's just move a few things out of the way and make our bounding box a little bit bigger because I think the first thing we want to do is naturally, let's just make this card a little wider and uh, let's go back to our design and see we had like some sort of live tag top left, the watch count there and then no description, but it said just the name and that whole lockup um, down there, like bottom, bottom left instead. Okay. So, so just so I can remember it, I'm just going to grab one of these and bring it over into my system really quick. I'm going to paste it right here so I can look at it because that's what we're trying to recreate. Right. Okay. So in this one, we can, whoop, we can hide this command shift H to hide it. Uh, this can go up to the top, right? This can come down to the bottom. And we need to have some sort of live tag. So what's more important here? Uh, let's do inactive for our watch count and let's come over and do active here and we'll put the word live. Okay. 
this may or may not be like the right visual like look for this and we might have to come in and fix this a little bit totally can um, but that's let's call variant number two let's just call it variant number two we have default variant two um, this is probably more stream card specific that's okay but we just need to make sure these are responsibly sized the right way so like hey we want this to be pinned to the top left this we want to be to the top right and now this piece we want to be to the bottom left now we can take our card and instead let's give me variant two good all right so it's just a, like a little bit of a mix-up mashup of that first card uh looks really good okay great um now let's duplicate and have another one what are these about 16 pixels away from each other obviously because eight times two is 16. we're going to grab both of them shift a put them in an auto layout and we're going to just copy paste copy paste copy paste a bunch of them all the way down all right um and let's fill each one of these cards with some other gameplay footage well we're just dra dragging those in here again we're going to grab this thing unclip the content so we can actually grab each one of these drag them in drag them in and, and maybe we want to stagger some of this uh more interesting colors and content here so okay that works good I'm gonna come back here and reclip the content. And now we can do our first kind of prototype. Look at that, look how quick, look how quick it was to make that next piece because we had created our components and everything, right? Okay, this is really, really good. We definitely have to fix these little, uh, like how many people watching chips and turn. we have to figure out like a better version of that for sure. Absolutely, so I know that. Uh, but let's, uh, let's right now just do our quick prototype back and forth between the two, right? Um, so I'm gonna come up to prototype and I'm gonna say, uh, let's see, stream, stream, streams. Hey, when you click streams, hey, take me over here. On tap, um, I wanna navigate to uh, Elden Screen stream list. Uh, apparently I have two of those. So let's just get rid of that one real quick because I don't like to see two. I like to see the one, beautiful. Okay, instantly, no, 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 let's push. Let's push this way. Beautiful, it's gonna push, ease out, I like that. And then let's go back the other way, whoop. And, but we don't wanna push that way, we wanna push the other way. Okay, with that said, we should be able to press play. We should be able to push, 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 just like that. Okay, now, one thing I'm not loving is I would love it if these top areas, this top navigation area right here, and the bottom nav would stay, right? Um, and not move in between. Um, and that's something we'll have to figure out how to do. Uh, one thing I think we need to do is I really do like this pattern, maybe these chips and this title, and I think I wanna re-implement that over here on my stream list. So I'm just zooming in here. I'm gonna hit Command L to collapse all of my, uh, yeah, uh, Option L, excuse me, Option L to collapse all of my layers over there in the left-hand layer panel. I'm gonna move this list down and I'm just gonna come in, pick the screen, and pop these in here. Now, let's give them a little bit of context did you notice that depending on where you copy and paste things right it's gonna it's gonna put things in a different spot so we're 24 pixels from the top or from that top nav and then 16 pixels away from the edge so let's just go off that we'll pop this in here and we should be 24 pixels from the top and we should be 16 away from the edge following yep and let's use similar 24 pixel um, now what we need to do is change this. So uh, find a, uh, let's just put here live, find a, find a live stream, okay? Like that and take this in. And I think this title can actually flex all the way over. We'll bring these back up. Let's just find that 24 pixels of spacing or not find, let's do watch, watch. A live stream okay something like that it just brings a little bit of consistency across um, yeah just across like the application when we have similar kind of vibes going on so these might change um, and maybe these are you know the the chips that we use here to kind of like filter down maybe those kind of change a little bit right so instead of saying dungeon this could be um, you know uh, battles uh, or something like that. This one, that's, and this one could be something else like, uh, like, uh, uh, tips 
and tricks or something like that. I don't know. So they just got some different stuff going on in there. We always have the side navigation, which we're going to have to figure out what to do. Ooh, what to do with the side navigation. Um, but let's take what we've done here now and start to implement a little bit, right? Let's implement over here. Um, I, I like to do it this way. I like to um, move from, right? Like take what's already existing and duplicate the the artboards over in this case we're not going to have these elements and we're also not going to have any of this stuff at the top right because when you go into a product screen when you go into something that's focusing now on a product a stream you are now immersing the user right whereas back here we want the user to be able to quote unquote portal in and out to select where they need to go and they need to have some sort of global context of where they're at that's why we give them in ux design a global navigation top navigations titles to let them know where where they're at but as soon as they actually dive into a product boom, we're going to rip all this stuff out no longer do they have global navigation they need contextual control do you see that so we go from global navigation to contextual control, right? That way the user is immersed. There's actually some tricky things you could do here. Some people will even keep some sort of status bar out on these global screens, right? Time, battery, the stuff that comes native to the device. And some people, when you dive into immersive experiences, will actually remove the status bar intentionally, take it away. I think it's actually kind of a no-no. You're not supposed to, but some people do. Why? It's a kind of a dark pattern so that the user doesn't know how much time. They can't check the clock and be like, oh, I've been watching this stream for like 30 minutes, right? Instead, what they do is they say, don't worry about the time. Just keep watching the content. Keep engaging. Stay with us, right? It's a little bit sneaky, but it kind of helps the user immerse themselves in the content at hand, all right? So let's do this. Let's take our little chip and our arrow, and let's basically we're going to mimic what we have going on here in this top navigation. And my watch is trying to talk to me. Be quiet, Siri. We are designing and we don't need you right now. Okay, here we go. I'm going to grab these items. And what we want to do is not only kind of match the spacing here. This is kind of like 15 pixels from the side. That's weird. It should be 16 on each side, shouldn't it? It should. Okay, so it should be 16. And what size is our uh, menu um, icon? It says 28, it should be 28 by 28, and this one is not really 28 by 28. So let's constrain the size of our icon, and let's move it up to 28 by 28, okay? Um, bum, 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 bum. All right, now we have an icon that is a similar size, right? Now we're, we don't need to do that for our, um, for our live tag. Let's use the red, we might go to our our um, brand color or our contrasting color here. But let's group these things together and we'll move them up into place. Well, let's just do this. How far did it need to be? 32 from the top. Okay, so let's just make it 32 from the top. All right, now we have similar stuff going on, but we also get this beautiful live streaming video, right, that should be behind it like that. Now, real quick, let's get this old stuff out of there. We don't need it and I'm going to do something a little intentional here I'm going to leave you know I kind of locked in my wireframe the uh, controls and the photo were actually part of the same group I just grouped them together but in my actual design I'm going to keep these things separate because I might want to do who knows you might want some sort of scroll interaction you might want something like that okay the question becomes something I didn't think through is how do we expand this where are the play controls where are the um, expansion controls to go full screen? Are we only doing it like on tilt or on twist? Um, boy, that's a good question. I think we probably need some sort of expand control. So I'm going to open up uh, a, an icon uh, program that I use called Nucleo to kind of house and store all of my icons. And we're going to go hunting here a little bit and find an icon if it will ever load. And while oh, I was going to say while it's loading, let's do something else, but let's not. Let's just keep cruising. We'll find something and let's search for uh, expand. Do we have anything for expand? Ha ha. This is what we're looking for. We like this. Um, yeah, pop, 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 pop. Let's go here. This is kind of like zoom. This is full screen. Let's just pull this full screen icon in here and see what that looks like, shall we? All right, we'll grab this. Let's take the selection color, move it to white so it pops a little bit. 
and let's put it right down here at the bottom. Now, uh, ooh, yeah, that's 16 there, and let's match it. We'll just do 16 from the bottom hand edge there. I feel like that's nice. I feel like that could work for now. We'll leave that there for now. I'm gonna collapse my layers over there, Option L. I'm gonna move in here and start moving these items into place. Now, what we need to do is we need to think about, <laughs> we need to think about all this stuff going in and well, it's all just, it's basically gonna get, you know, inverted, like all the colors and everything. So we have our chat here. Why don't we just move our chat in? Okay, I'm gonna pop it there, move it at 16 pixels on the left hand edge and the right hand edge. Then I'm gonna take the black, I'm gonna turn it to red really quickly. Stay with me, stay with me. I'm gonna take the white, I'm gonna move it to uh, our color because it was just kind of like a spacing thing. Now the reason I did that is because as soon as I move everything to black, then when you try to move text back, ugh, it gets kind of mess up. This little selection color panel down here is super helpful in Figma. It allows me to just grab colors and then move everything in one smack. Boom, just like that. We changed everything. We flopped everything over. Okay, uh, I'm going to move this down and make a little bit of space. I'm going to move this in, line it up 16 and 16. I'm liking it. And uh, boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, this one we might actually grab the text and just like so. Uh, selection colors, let's move to white. Let's move them all to white and we will use transparency. You know, on a dark interface, this light text actually, this regular text is not really, it's not really slapping the way that I want it to. You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna hit, ju jump it up to medium and then I'm gonna bring the opacity of this text down to give it the contrast that I need. So there's lots of different ways to bring contrast to um, connected elements or like elements on a page, text in this case. There's lots of ways to bring contrast. You can bring it through size, you can bring it through style, you can bring it through weight, you can bring it through font selection, you can bring it through color. We chose here to bring it through color, AKA opacity, just downgrading that opacity a little bit, okay? So that's what we're doing there. Now, we had kind of a style already set up and I wanna honor that style. Let's just bring our home screen over here really quickly. Do you see this color right here? What is this color? It's really just a uh, white down at 10%, right? So we're gonna take this sucker right here and we're gonna move it to white and drop it down to 10%. And now we get that same style that we had over yonder, okay? Now, what do we have here? Body large and caption small. We want the same thing here. Let's not, let's, let's reuse similar styles if we can. Uh, body large. And we'll grab this piece here and we'll go to our text styles and say, caption small, that's what we want, okay? Now, I think we probably need to do the same thing. I'm very upset with myself that this little card right here is not obeying the other rules that we have. So what I'm gonna do is right click on this component because we already created a component out of it, right? And I really want to uh, go to the main component that's in our system right now, okay? Here's the issue I'm having. It was the same issue we had before. Uh, I think I need to bring the opacity of this down a little bit, down to like 50% to bring that contrast, all right? Is this live, Tatiana? Ask, this is live, Tatiana. If it's not, then I just said your name through a recording. And that's really weird. So, you know, stay with us because it's a live stream. All right. So we brought the contrast down to that. Let's go back to our design. See how much better it looks. Hey, y'all, this is a good reminder why you should always work on things in multiple stages. You should work on your design, go away from it, come back, look at it again, work on it some more, go away, come back, look at it again. I wanna do a quick shout out out there to all my freelancers, or even if you're working in-house somewhere for a company, this is why there are deadlines for the design. When a deadline is set for you, as a designer, let's say you have two weeks to come up with this design we're working on, you need to set up internal deadlines for yourself, knowing that you need to work on the design, step away from it, come back with fresh eyes, get some revision, get some uh, other eyeballs on it. You have to set up your own internal deadlines. So for me, I'd work on this for like a day or two. I might send it to somebody to get some a look at it and I'll work on something else for another day. I'll come back to this, I'll look at it and go, what the heck was I thinking? Not giving contrast to this text, gotta fix that. And now the, the design improves. So it's a good idea to step away from your work, come back, 
set those internal personal deadlines so that you can meet your external deadlines. All right. We got people in the chat who are saying absolutely gross things. I'm blocking this user from the chat. Go away. We're all done with you. Don't ever come back here and speak of those gross things inside of my chat again. Gosh, do I have to, do I have to handle people like that? Don't come on here and talk about weird, gross things. We're talking about UI design today, folks. Get over it. All right, here we go. We're moving on. So we have fixed a little bit of the contrast issue we had on those cards. I don't mind this because this has good contrast be between this green and this headline. And uh, we probably had the same thing down there. Okay, so we're looking good. We're looking good. Um, we got this regular. And again, it's not slapping the way that we want it to. So we're going to pump it up to be something more like medium. Love that. Okay, and what do we got going on here? We got 16 pixels at the edge, but our text boxes need to take up the full space of that 16 pixels. You tracking with me? Because um, otherwise it's weird, right? We have, we have down over here on the left-hand side, our avatars are giving us 16 pixels on the left-hand edge, but our text was not. It was getting kind of short-changed. So we want to make sure that we just pump that out. Do you notice how I'm using... Um, I'm using uh, auto layout and it is just automatically kind of like changing our layout of all the things that are inside of the auto layout underneath it. As we do it, all the spacing is just changing perfectly. It's doing what it's supposed to do because auto layout is legit. It's the stuff you need in your life, okay? So if not using auto layout as much as you can, get on it. Yeah, that looks much, much better. We're liking that much better. Um, here's the problem that I'm having. I pulled all this over and now I don't have a wireframe reference, but that's okay. We're going to grab these items and we're going to make them white. You guessed it, white. And then you guessed it. We're going to do that same contrast trick here. We bring this down to 50% just to get that contrast. That looks so much better. We're liking it so much better already. Also, you know what I'd really like a lot better is if my little tag guy, my little shapey here was our call to action color. That pops a little bit more. And then we can bring this to be boop, 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 kind of like a dark background color. Come on, now we're talking. That pops a little bit more. I'm liking all this stuff. These things need to go away. So what we're gonna do here to fix these icons is let's actually grab these. We'll make the, the outline of these white because these are kind of like wireframe icon placeholders. We don't want that, right? Let's go primary and pop it in there. It's a little darker. Look. They stand out a little bit. They pop a little bit more. And you know what we need to do? We need to think about um, click states, active states. The arrows don't have contrast. I know. Uh, Fal Falgen says the arrows don't have contrast. I know because we haven't gotten there yet, right? We're not. We're not. I'm not leaving these black on black. That would be the worst design decision that I've made in a really long time. If I was to, these should definitely. Let's just fix them right now because people are like, "What is he doing?" Yeah, these were going to 100% be white. They were going to pop a little bit more, right? Absolutely. Hundo percento. Okay. Let's figure out what's inside here. Did I have like a, did I have some sort of, uh, I didn't. Was there no, I had no stroke. I had no bottom kind of like stroke to this guy. I really should have. Um, I tell you what, let's just draw a line inside of here because there should be a separator inside of this bad boy and it should be white and we should bring the opacity of it down 50%. If you're asking yourself like, okay, how, how is he making decisions on what gets what opacity? There's actually two things I'm kind of thinking of in the back of my mind. Um, number one, when I think of opacity, um, I'm thinking of contrast and I'm thinking of um, um, which, which things have primary or like, or really should be getting primary eyeballs on them or primary access to people's like thoughts, thought process. So things that are important need to stand out contrast wise, things that are less important need to drop back. So separating elements, design elements, things that are not content usually should take the back seat. And in this case, we're using contrast to do that and transparency to do that. But number two, a little bit more specifically and targeted to this design, when you're doing dark interfaces, you're really talking about layers and levels of darkness, right? And the darker something is, the further it is in the background. The lighter something is, the more in the foreground it's considered. The reason we think this, or the reason we do this, is because think of a dark room. 
if there's a fully dark room and a flashlight, that thing tends to be what we focus on the most. If there's a bright flashlight that is the brightest flashlight you've ever seen in your life and a candle flickering in the corner, that kind of, it's the candle's there, but it's secondary. It's light. It's probably casting light on other areas in the room. And that's the casted light is less important than the candle, but the candle's less important than the flashlight. And the flashlight is way more important than the rest of the darkness. Do you see what I'm doing here? So the difference between light and dark in dark interfaces starts to show importance or or what is primary and what ha what is secondary. Tatiana's uh, complimenting my room. Thank you. This is my office and workspace and I love it so much. All right. So we're doing pretty good here. And even this line for me is a little bit too much. So I'm gonna drag this down to be something more like 20% because I don't want it to stick out. And the idea here is that we've opened up chat. We are currently chatting. Um, and uh, if we wanted to, we could kind of whoop, we could retract this like an accordion and pull that thing up. So this is looking all right. Again, are we doing the thing here where, yeah, we need to go caption small. But our captions small, really, 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 we need to maybe edit this because caption small, it is on medium. It's looking fine. Okay, good. Caption small is looking good. Um, thank you. Uh, Jean Garcia says, love the thought process explanations. All right, that's awesome. That's the whole point of these live streams is for you to see how I think, not that the way that I think is perfect and the best, but it's just the way that I think about things. I find it helpful to see how other people think about things. And so I just figured it'd be helpful to you. If you like the way that I kind of share my thought process and teach, make sure you like, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification icon, so you know when more videos like this one come out. Hey, let's jump in and let's do our chat box at the bottom. It's very important. But first, let's bring that. We had this idea of doing kind of uh, a gradient overlay, but this gradient overlay shouldn't go from white to less white. It should go from black to a less transparent version of black. That way, when we put our, woo, watch out, we're gonna bring a copy of this over. And now that's one thing you do have to worry about a little bit is when you're working with auto layout, things are gonna try to jump into auto layout land. And we don't, we don't always want that, right? 18, 16, let's come over, let's expand this over 16 on both sides. We're gonna put our little chat box at the bottom. Now here comes the question, does our chat box need to stand out more? Now that we have a dark interface, does the chat box need to pop a little bit more i think it does actually okay so here's what we're gonna do let's just get these things out of the way so we can concentrate now a little bit whoa and let's bring this over and i'm i'm, I'm gonna bring my other screens to the left and right of it because i want I, I need a little bit of context what have we already done what other solutions are there i tell you I was like, oh, I gotta pick some sort of color. Why would I pick a new color when I already have white brought down to 10%, right? So let's do white and let's try it down to 10%. Okay, now it is still popping, but the problem I have is that you can see things behind it. So I, I have actually a, a plugin installed on my computer called Color Snapper. Color Snapper is going to allow me to just anywhere on my computer, in the browser, wherever, grab a color. And what now what I need to do is I actually need to mimic, wait, do I have it turned on? Color Snapper too. okay. I'm gonna hit the hotkey and I get this little selector, all right? It's telling me what this color is. And let me just draw out a rectangle so you can see. This is the color, technically speaking, of our opaque kind of uh, um, like drop down white. This is white at 10% with our all of our colors and everything behind it. So we are gonna cheat and use that color so that we don't get this see-through vibe here. This is a little bit of a hack, it's a little bit of a cheat. I don't, you know, I'd like to stick to uh, whatever principle we're using as much as possible, but this one, it does it without that, that's that see-through kind of deal going on right there, okay? So this works, and we're not gonna do that in a lot of places, we're just gonna do it in a few places. We're gonna move this to medium so the message thing pops a little bit more. Um, as far as our weight, but again, this is inactive, right? So we need to bring this thing down so that the possibility for you to chat, the placeholder text is not overwhelming. It's not competing with the actual chat inside the box. Do we see that? Very, very important. Okay, cool. Uh, we gotta do a similar treatment that we did up here with our, uh, whatchamacallits, with our, um, uh, with our icons. So, but let's do this one a little bit differently, shall we? We're going to grab our color, our fill color. Let's go primary. And this is, this needs to be a call to action. So instead of doing white, we're going to use our, oh, watch out. We need the actual 
line items, the shapes here, and we're gonna make those our call to action color. Okay, because we do want that to pop a little bit. It's an actionable button that's always actionable. Does that make sense? Okay, whereas what we do, we also need to do is we need to create probably some components out of these. So let's grab both of these really quickly and just turn these into multiple components. Let's do that, multiple components. Um, great, and this component, um, I think really quickly, we need to boom, move that out there. Mm, let's grab both of these components and move them out here really quickly, okay? And then let's work on, uh, oh, you know what we wanna do? We wanna bring our master out and bring both of these into whoop, our thing, okay? And we're gonna group those together and we want these to, mm, we messed up our auto layout structure that we had going on there. So let's group these two together like so. We'll bring them in and then which ones are master? These two are our masters, let's pop those out. Okay, we should be lined up and good now, okay? So now what we can do is uh, we can actually right click on these and say move to our system page. Let's go to our system page. Let's do a little bit of system work here. Where did they go? They're way over in La La Land. Let's bring them over because we want we need to create a variant of both of these, don't we? I think so. So let's create um, boop, 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 a properties. Ooh, this is a new update by Figma. We can create a new property inside of our, um, our component here. Instead of going immediately to variant, we can create a new property. What do we want? We want an instance swap, a Boolean, which is a true or false statement, or do we want text? And that's just defining almost like, like creating like a, an input field in WordPress or a custom field. It's like, what do you want this to be? Um, I want it to be, let's do Boolean. Okay. And let's come over here and see, we want this to say, uh, active, true or false. Currently it's false. Let's create the property. Oh, ho, ho, ho. good, 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 good. Go remind me later. Get out of here. This is fun. I like what, I like what, uh, I like what Figma's doing here. Okay. Let's zoom in a little bit more so we can still play with this one. Okay. So now we have active. We need to create, oh, how do we create a new property now? Interesting. Create a component property. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, we do need to create a variant of this bad boy, right? And maybe they switch that adding to the variant is up here now. Okay, so we're adding a variant. Beautiful. Okay, so look, we've added our variant. Let's come down here and let's change our color, the fill color to be at. Oh my gosh, like yikers. Okay, so the stroke needs to be in the center there. And what we actually need to do also is we need to fill this puppy. So I'm going to create uh yeah ba, 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 da, ba. i'm gonna fill it also and fill it with our cta color okay now we're just playing because I, I haven't played with these new things here uh inside of figma but we don't we want this one has property one default variant two hmm, 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 hmm. let's undo that how do we get to where we need it to be property one should have been you know what, I'm gonna do it the old school way. We'll come over here and we'll fix this where it says uh, active. I have to do a little studying there. Uh, active, uh, let's put true, uh, false, excuse me. F-A-L-S-E, and we should get a Boolean there, okay? Now we're gonna do variant two, active. We're naming things over in our layers panel here. And we're gonna put true, okay? So boom. False and true. All right, we should be able to come over to our assets really quickly, grab this, drag the instance in, and say, do we want true or false? Boom, okay, so now we have a working component. We should be able to come back to our design. If you're watching, you're like, what the heck did you just do? We're creating components. Those components have variants. The variants are filled with different properties to switch around inside of those variants. Then after we've created that component that has the variants and those built with properties, we're gonna insert an instance, which is what's already in here, and we can dictate and say, <laughs> that's not how you spell the word false, but we can say, hey, we want it to be true, okay? So now we have, you know, we're able to just toggle things on and off. It's one component that has multiple variants. I did, somebody says you misspelled false. I know, I'm really, really sorry. Let's go back and fix it. I'm 
horrible at spelling f-a-l-s-e i was trying to move too fast beautiful okay we spelled it correctly now okay so this is coming together a little bit i think that we do we want to add something maybe a little bit custom here because my fear is that our chat box is kind of it's kind of dying a little bit right it's not it's not you know we want to stand out a little bit not too much i'm going to put a stroke on this thing i'm going to make it white um, I'm going to fill it. Let's do something fancy really quick. Linear gradient. Okay. I'm going to go from one corner to another like this. And then I'm going to bring the entire thing down. And I, that's a really big one. So let's go 0 0.5 for the stroke. And now it just kind of stands out a little bit. If you don't like the direction of that gradient, that's cool. You can change it. You do you. I'm going to do me. Um, we want it to be just a little bit. Yeah, yeah, something like that is kind of cool. And I tell you, I'm not, I'm not digging this button. It's the call to action button. It's not popping the way that it should, right? Okay, so we need to change that by coming here and saying, change you to be the CTA color. And let's change you to be, let's go, maybe try to go back to white or we'll go to the primary color so that it pops. See, now that you can't ignore the chat button. What we're saying here is, hey, user, we want you to know that this is a live stream that you're currently watching and we have some information for you here. Here's the chat. Start chatting, start chatting, start chatting. This is what we want in a live streaming application. I would imagine that what you really want is engagement, right? And engagement equates to chat. So we're thinking about what's the always as a user experience designer, what's the primary thing that we want users to be doing? Right. For instance, right now, while I'm talking, the primary thing I want you to be doing is liking, subscribing, and hit the bell notification. That's why I put it up there. I don't put it as a secondary thing. I put it as a primary thing, right? Same way in our user experience designs, we have to decide what is primary, what is secondary, what is tertiary, and how do we organize that information? Very, very important. Okay. Tatiana is saying you're confused. Ask a question. Let me know why you're confused. I would love to help you out. Okay. So let's get rid of some more people who are uh block report yep get rid of you hide the user on this channel go away stop spamming my live streams we're talking about ui design not other things okay um sam seagal says thanks for these streams i find them fascinating i learn a lot i'm so glad that means a lot to me that you're learning a lot from these live streams i'm learning a lot from these live streams nobody ever has it all together hey i tell you what i kind of like i kind of like her streaming page it's not bad dude um it you know it probably needs a little work it could always get better let's be honest right but you know for the most part it's doing its thing. It's doing what it's supposed to do. So I like it. I'm into it. Um, we could do a little bit of interaction here, but I think we might end the day by putting everything back where it belongs. Here's the dashboard. Here is the stream list. Here's the actual stream page. Okay. And now let's do a little bit of our prototyping. Uh, let's go uh, over to the prototype tab. I'm going to grab this one here. And on click, we're gonna move over. So on tap, on click, whatever you wanna call it. I want you to navigate to, um, let's see, navigate to Elden Screen. Oh, why is it still called Streamlist? Let's call this Elden Screen uh, Detail. Let's call this the Detail page, okay? So, boom, let's go back to it. We're going to the Detail page. Is there an animation? Is it instant? I they, actually, they changed, Figma changed our interaction page a little bit. Uh, that's okay. Let's just do an, a very easy push and we'll push over like that 300 seconds. Um, we can try smart animating any matching layers. I doubt there's going to be any matching layers, but let's go back the other way. If we click on the arrow, uh, we should be able to on tap navigate to, we want to push the other way. Now we could do something interesting here. Let's try grabbing the entire screen. Can we do on drag? Can't, will that work and, and push us back? I don't know. Let's try. I've actually, I don't know if I've done that for a little bit. So now let's move back and test our prototype a little bit. We can swing over a little bit. We can hit stream. It goes active. We get some options here. We got to fix this for some reason. We don't have anything blocking our top view like we do down here on our bottom view. But we click here. We go into our stream. We click back. Let's try again. And if we drag over, oh, we get the drag gesture, baby. That's what's up drag it back and we get some weird matching stuff here. So we're going to fix that really quickly before we go because that I'm not, I'm not happy with what's going on in our dashboard experience. 
when things scroll. I see they're scrolling up with it. Um, and for some reason here, these are fixed in place. Why are they fixed in place? Let's go back over to streams and scroll. They should scroll too. And I think it's probably because they're not in the auto layout. I think everything over here was in the auto layout. That is the difference that we had here, right? So let's go back to the design really quickly. We don't want a fixed position. We want it to be in uh, inside. So let's just drag this inside the frame. Boom, everything lines up. Let's put it, I think it was 24 pixels from the top. One, two, three, four. Now it should all scroll together, I believe. And we need this thing to be inside as well. We need our top nav to be inside our frame. Whoop, that should be in there as well. And the whole thing is 32 pixels from the top. We're letting auto layout just take care of the spacing for us. This should have fixed our issue. Now everything is going to slide, okay? That's looking more like the way we had it here on our home screen. Now we have it on our stream screen. Click over here and we need to be able to, we, we do need to be able to scroll through our chat though. That's one thing. Why don't we figure out, ooh, hello. Let's figure out how to do that before we go too much further. Um, because this whole section needs to scroll without, without interacting anywhere else. And the easiest way to do that is actually just to come into prototype and we could need to put it into a vertical scroll like so, but it's giving us a little warning here. And the warning says, Ooh, yeah, yeah. No scrolling really quickly. It needs to be inside of a group, I think. So why don't we group this really quickly? And then we will say, hey, take this thing and vertically scroll. And this thing here needs to say fixed position when scrolling. Is that the right way to do it? No, it's not. Ooh, man, I think I've stumped myself. I don't know how to make this thing scroll. And that's something I might need to go back and figure out. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Can you? Can you make an auto layout scroll? I know how to do this in Adobe XD, super easy. Um, uh, I just forget how to do it in Figma sometimes. I do, I do, I do. Okay, so this, aha, I know what it is. Okay, so our group, I remember, ha ha ha, it took a second. We need to take the group that it's held in and we need to collapse the group, right? So it has to have a parent container and the content needs to drip outside of that container so that it can scroll. Are you tracking with me? Otherwise, it's like, where do you want me to scroll? How can I scroll? The container's set. So set a master container around it and the content drips outside of it and it will scroll around in that parent container, I believe. Let's see if I'm right. Now, we should be able to say to our stuff, vertical scrolling, it should work and we're scrolling inside. Okay, great. Now, what we have to do is take that group and we want to clip this. And you know what? I, I know what we need to do. It can't be inside of a uh, group. It has to actually be inside of a frame. This is the power of frames, y'all. So I'm going to hit F for frame. Okay, I'm going to draw a frame onto my page here. Let's say right there. And this is going to be, I'm going to title it chat box okay i'm gonna collapse the rest of my stuff let's find and here's all the chat stuff i'm gonna bring my ch i'm gonna drop if you can see what i'm doing here i'm gonna grab all of my chat stuff that's inside of here put it inside the frame called chat box and now that frame can clip the content and this stuff should be scrolling inside do you see what we just did we <laughs> We made the prototype come to life. Look at that, okay? So now you can see we have scroll control inside of this frame and this frame only. You can scroll up and down and it looks so beautimous. We've done it. This is just note to self. If you don't know how to do something, just stick with it. Figure it out. I know someone says, well done. I probably should have already knew how to do that, but hey, it was fun anyways. It was fun to figure out. So, you know, we can have some real fun and just take all the elements inside of here, copy and paste. So we have a ton of chat inside of it. That's going to let us really scroll through a lot, a lot, a lot of chat. Beautiful. Okay. And the more you put in there, the more you can scroll. Love it. Okay. So now chat's working. The next step would then be to take this whole thing, connect it with our chat accordion. And on tap, we'd want to whoop, 
we want to move that chat up. We could probably do that actually pretty quickly by just doing a second. You can turn the whole thing into a component if you want to create like a complex interactive component. Let's just do it really quick artboard to artboard so you can see, okay? Um, so we're going to say when we tap this thing here, we want our arrow. We're going to have our arrow flip to show that it's closed again. And then we are going to take our chat and, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We just need to make sure that our chat is actually behind all of this stuff and do our chat boxes, these groups, do they have a background to them? Hmm, that's what we need to know is does it have a background to it? Um, you know what we probably need to do is across this whole thing, we need to put a fill in the background and we need to choose that, not primary, where'd that dark background color go? Okay, we'll do the same thing here. We'll fill it and we will create this dark background color right here and then we'll grab everything. It should be behind and we should be able to just whoop, condense it up and now we'll do our prototype. Are you ready? So we'll say, we'll come in here really quickly and we will say, hey, when you uh, tap this accordion bar, everything is going to, we want to auto animate this thing, right? Not push. We want to smart animate it up. Beautiful. That should it, it collapse it. Uh, just like so and we'll sure 300 milliseconds. That's fine. And we come back and Hit it again Jump to the whole thing. We'll just go back the other way. It should smart animate back. Let's see. Does it work? We should be able to collapse our chat and expand our chat just like so we can scroll our chat Collapse it expand it. Oh my gosh. We're doing live streaming stuff and some Billy B said Scroll Patrol! Well, that's it. That's the free course about designing a mobile app inside of Figma. If you stayed the course and actually watched this whole thing, good for you. I'm so excited. Leave a comment down below and let me know what you thought about it. Do you want more content like this where you can watch a lot of the design process all in one place? Let me know. I'd love to make more content like this for you. If you haven't already, make sure you leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. I do lots of videos about design and development and the full process just like this one. So maybe stick around by hitting that bell notification icon. If you have any thoughts, questions, or concerns, leave those down in the comments. But I hope you're having an amazing week. I hope you're designing amazing things, making amazing things, and walking through the full process to make amazing portfolio pieces. We'll see you in the next one.